get stuck. I can't right now. Wait, you will? I get stuck. Oh. Looks good. It, it should say on there that it's going to start. Five playing, seconds. So. Six seconds. Oh, hey, we're <laughs> We are streaming. Okay, so as long as. There's nobody watching us yet. It's just my life. Yeah, I just. Whatever. Do you see my coffee? Never buy this coffee. <laughs> Dude, I'm gonna dump this out. It's disgusting. That bad, huh? Dude, it literally tastes like mild soy sauce. Gross. Oh yeah. Gross. <laughs> I don't want anything to do with it. Oh. Their hot coffee's not bad. Yeah. Oh, that's a cold brew. That's why. Nah, probably not. Fucking gross. Alright, that shit all good. That's why I just need to make sure. I hope there's people here. Yeah, we got six people here. Seven people. Already? Alright, that's what I like to see. And live chat should be live. That's ready. Why does that look like shit? Okay, it's <laughs> just a preview, so that's just the way it always looks. Oh, okay. Wait a minute. We can't see a lot of things. Why can't we? What's up, guys? Oh. Hey, Jack. Hey, What's Jack. Up, buddy? What's Hold up, on dude? Um, Yo. Deviancy over there. Good evening. Did that start yeah. zooming up? Yeah. That's pretty good. Tell me when is a good zoom. Oh, Jesus. One more? I can't see it. I can barely read the comments. <laughs> How about now? That's, I mean, that's the way it was. It looks pretty good. I didn't think that was any issue. What's you can't up? read that? I can read it, but when it was smaller, I couldn't. <laughs> I was like, that's like, that's perfect. I saw yo, and it looked like yo, do, 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 do. <laughs> hey, Sean and Chris. Ryan, what's up? Give me one second. I want to grab. What was I just going to grab? I had that. I had everything. What yeah. were we just talking about? Oh, yeah, oh, oh. Grab the damn seat. We were gonna, yeah, that too. We were going to get, get out of here, Mom. All righty. Yeah, you know what? No product highlight tonight. Huh? We can't really do a product highlight tonight because we have one. Yes, I do. I have one thing. I Aluminum one. boats versus fiberglass boats. That's Martin. Okay. Aluminum that's boats. Right. John. <laughs> no, that's not Martin. John. That's fine. We'll do that. We got to talk that at some point. Chris Martin, the, uh, well, I guess, creator, owner, director, whatever you want to call him, all of the above, of uh, Aluminum Fishing Series, wants to do that with us sometimes. So we're going to make that happen. How's it going, Chris? Glad you could join us. We're not doing beer tonight. Although I suppose I could. Oh, if I had any, I could. We're doing black cherry soda vodka. Because why not? Again. Again. It's good. Hey, David. How you doing, buddy? Biddeford. Is it Bideford? Biddeford? 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 Um, I would assume Biddeford. Biddeford. Yeah, Biddeford, Maine. Uh, oop, phone is not on silence. Okay. Silencio. We're just going to wait as usual. We'll go till about 8.05. And then we'll start the stream in earnest. You know what I'm thinking? If we really want to do a product highlight, we bust out the spinner baits and some crank baits. I can show off all of the Rocky ones. Yeah. Oh, so good. yeah, there's one that one down there, and then toss me the whole spinner bait box for a hot minute. Hey Paul. Um, well, oh. no, no, that's not that that not that one. The perchy oh, no. one underneath everything. Sorry. Keep going. Oh, you know what? I put it away. Just hand me the whole spinner bait box, please. And then <laughs> square bill shallow crank. Nope, over. Up one. That one. Ooh, I almost sent my drink for a ride. I, I just sent this coffee for a ride. No. <laughs> By the way, never buy coffee from Wendy's. It's freaking horrible. All right. We don't have a, a ton to show off. I'm pretty sure that is another one. But we got something. We can talk. At least about one. Or two things. What is his, his is another? Oh, yeah, it is. Oh, my God. I forgot that he made this one for me, dude. No, this is um, coffee powder. Yeah, that's him. Is it? Who's Dragon? It's supposed to be coffee powder. Uh, no. Um, Dragon is this one. Ooh. Yeah, he's got all those in there are dragons. This is the other one. And I, you know, I used to have some sweet terminal tackle, but I don't have them. Who else we got? Fishing mode. Hey, buddy. All right. I haven't seen you in a while. Yeah. Uh, Kotu, Jack. Oh, yeah. We're going to talk Rocky Ledge a little bit. Yeah, fishing mode. That's what's up. Oh, 
Uh, we'll give it just like one more minute, and then we'll uh, we'll get started in earnest. I should. No, I'm not gonna speak. Uh, I put the webcam a little lower this time. We're still good on the stream, but it feels a little weird because I'm looking down. But that's okay. Um, I guess before we really get started, just make sure, please, that audio is good across the board. There's no music because I whole whole new setup. Um, and for some reason, it won't let me play music I already have on my computer, like MP3 files I've already saved. At the same time, I'm using this software to make these two microphones work. So just make sure, just let me know if you know there's no echo, audio quality is good. It should be. We triple checked it. I put up a, fu uh, a private stream earlier to make sure everything was good. So I think we're good. But we got new mics, as you can see. Um, Rode pod mics, and these are sweet. And it sounded good in testing, so feeling good. Alex Monty, what's up, buddy? It's fish. No, we haven't. This came up last week. Isn't wasn't it you that asked that, or is it somebody else trying to hit some smallies later this week? But I'm not sure the water's warm enough. Warm enough. <laughs> it doesn't matter Can't what the water temp is. People ice fish. <laughs> <laughs> Lisa, how you doing? Glad you make up. John Mango, what's up, buddy? Um, all right, we're gonna call that good enough. So, so add a trash. So no, don't go there. <laughs> add a trash. <laughs> That's like a. This other place I know of, people call it sand toilet. Sand, <laughs> sand, sand toilet? To it. Oh. <laughs> Sweet. Yeah. Uh, volume's pretty low. Sounds good, though. Uh, I can fix that one second. No, I don't want to touch those yet. I'm going to go. Audio I'm just is gonna... perfect. Maybe you got to turn yours up. <laughs> I can boost it one <laughs> decibel. Is that better? No, I cannot boost it one decibel. Is that better? Not from there. Slow. If I can Sounds do this. good. What was this one? Oh, that was the Audio's same one. Audio's perfect. How's that? Yeah. Oh, Gary, what's up, buddy? Hang on, I'm gonna go. One point one. Is that too loud? If it is, turn it down. <laughs> we're done. <laughs> I literally went up one click on audio, so we should be good. Ah, uh, Curse Fisherman. Hey, what do we got? Gary Pet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Audio's perfect. Thank you, Bob. Rogue. How you doing, Eric? Minnesota. Cannot hear in the computer or my phone. Um, that might be a technical issue on your end. Sounds good. We're doing good, Curse. How you doing, buddy? Hold on. Let me, yeah. Um, Eric, try and fix it. All right. Perfect. Uh, Eric, cool. it's something on your end, buddy, unfortunately. Everybody else is good. Um, all right. Before we get started, something I really want to do, and I had to make sure I made a list because I didn't want to forget anybody. Um, I've always I've talked to every stream about how important and beneficial it is to have you guys the community promote the stream for us and just help everything grow and it's been going crazy good like this everything is exceeding expectations oh, by yeah. far um as of yesterday we were up 780 subscribers just from the Jesus live streams dude. alone <laughs> that's insane. just from the live streams that's insane and the crazy thing is my, the growth for the channel has been like not great despite that and I, I think a lot of people, like, unfortunately, that stupid Winnie video pulled in a ton of subscribers. And I think they're finally like, okay, we're done. Uh, but still making positive forward progress, so that's good. There's been a few people that have been, like, killer supportive. And I want to personally thank all of you. Obviously, my wife, my mother-in-law, my sister-in-law, my mom. Like, they've all been watching. They've been able to post, um, you know, share things on Facebook here and there. Fishing Mode has been, by far, the biggest supporter. Dude, thank you so much. You post this more than anybody else you actually write stuff up when you do it like hugely helpful thank you lisa demers has been right on your heels she she posts almost i'm pretty sure actually every stream as well yeah, sean miller so, yeah. um I, what is he the real 802 on instagram mm -hmm. i think i got that right yep um hugely supportive john emery the owner of wicked custom rods wicked custom rods in general you're awesome dude like you're awesome you know that he made me food i love him <laughs> <laughs> um kristen it goes by last cast fishing on um, Instagram. It's last cast fishing, but there's no A in the last. It's just LST cast fishing. She's been hugely supportive because she's our friend. Yeah. Thank you, Kristen. Yeah. Greatly appreciate the help. DJ, 3D fishing on Instagram. He's 3D underscore fishing. Also been hugely helpful. Thank you, brother. Brian Ernest, Alex Boulogne. I'm sorry if I spelled, sorry, said your last name wrong. Jason Huberty, Dennis Hart, my buddy there um, from Bass and Beers Facebook page. If you guys haven't followed that, you should. Um, if you like beer, that is. Jason Piva, um, Pava, sorry, who is actually the owner of um, Crazy Hickbait Company. Dale Wyman and Greg Higginbottom. You guys, thank you all so much. You all have been like consistent 
sharers or people that have gone above and beyond to not only share but like write a nice little blurb about what we're doing and cannot tell you how much we appreciate that so thank you uh keep it going keep growing things are looking good that's weird wait he still can't hear we're <gasps> thanks gary <laughs> we might be coming up soon dude um fishing mode i don't understand can't hear it all everybody else can hear i don't know what to do man i wish i could help you but i can't unfortunately i can't troubleshoot that on the fly right now um that's good about the river gary i think we're gonna do this weekend down in the cape again not sure <laughs> he's broken <laughs> for spare parts bud <laughs> <laughs> wish you weren't so awkward <laughs> <laughs> thank you kevin all right uh, so special thank you to everyone again you know people that share it if you haven't yet you know do, like do literally anything twitter facebook instagram tiktok i don't even care anything you do is huge and it's showing like every single stream it has been growing by leaps and bounds in some metric um so it's all been good um let's do i'm gonna save the product highlight for later so one of the things that I was really excited about for these streams as we we're going to get to them was to be able to recap like live. So go over what we're doing because eventually at some point my channel lags behind by like three to four weeks. Um, things happen with life, my job, whatever. I get fishing too much. I just don't have the time to edit. So eventually videos lag behind like what current conditions actually are. Um, and some of the times that's by design depending on where I'm fishing, what I'm doing, like if I'm doing tournaments. So... Uh, with the benefit of the live stream, we can tell you what we did four days ago. And then you can take that into tomorrow, Saturday, Sunday, within the next three days. Hopefully that paints a better picture for what it is. And the weather's going to be similar, so. I'm excited for this weekend. For yeah. once, it's actually going to line up great for this. Um, so, and then tonight's Q&A night, too. So, in the midst of recapping what we did this past Sunday, um, if you guys want, I mean, just fire out anything for questions related to that. And then we're just going to go, like, hard into Q&A night for you guys anything you wanted to bring up we're gonna make it happen um jackson kinney favorite lake in all of new hampshire we can um favorite can... lake <sighs> favorite lake that i'm willing to name <laughs> we can't name any of them i know <laughs> <laughs> um well the brownie factory yeah one of them yeah sorry phone is making the nice noise because i forgot um, to put it on that there we go uh, God, I don't know. That's hard to say. There's, I, a, there's a lot. Of, I have a lot of favorites. It used to be Squam for me. Because every place is different. Right. And I like different places for different reasons. I don't know. What's your favorite big lake? Favorite big lake in New Hampshire? Definitely not Winnie. <laughs> <laughs> Last time he goes out, catches a four and a five. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't. I fucking hate that place. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, hey, it's a children's I'm fam sorry. family friendly show. I'm a fucking man, okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. Mike's That's, still a bit quiet. I don't really know how. I can fix that. You do it. You're, keep, you're good. Keep going. I'd probably have to say probably the Brownie Factory. Oh, sorry. Just because we've been there so many times and caught so many good fish out of there. Yeah, New Hampshire Brownie Factory. Well, it's New Hampshire question, right? Yes, it was yeah. New Hampshire question. So, yeah, probably New Hampshire Brownie Factory. Thank you, Kraken Kid. We got a new setup, so um, I know it's all working, but trying to get audio levels balanced in has been a little problematic. Um, these mics are very gain-hungry. They, they need more power than they come with stock. And there's this, like, little extra plug that's supposed to just basically pump in a little extra power that I can't get because they're so highly sought after. They're very expensive. Uh, they've been on back order and will be until early next month. A little difficult to play with audio levels till then, but we'll get it sorted. So you said New Hampshire Brownie Factory is yeah. your favorite? He says Winnie is a good fishery when you learn how to fish it. My fr my two times I've ever fished there, I caught... Mondos. Mondos. <laughs> you caught four both times. Yeah. So maybe not Mondos, but big fish. And then a 5-3-1. And I'm not... I don't care. That Sorry, place, There's too, cool. much, too many people. That's why I don't boats. work at a desk to talk to people. I don't like people. So... <laughs> Besides you guys, you guys are cool. I, I forgot that this is uh, not attached in the most sturdy manner. Sorry if it was boom because of the mic. Um, don't touch it. I told you not to touch it. God. You know, my, my favorite fisher used to be Squam. Um, dude, it's like one of the few places in the state where you can go 
well, there's at least a decent amount of the, uh, decent part of the year where you can go crack a giant small and a giant large in the same rock pile. So and it's it's nice. It's it's beautiful. You were on the doorstep of the White Mountains when you're up on Squab. Yeah, so everywhere you look cool north, it's just all mountains, and it's beautiful. It to me, it still is the most beautiful fishing spot in the state. But I haven't been up to Umbagog, which I've heard is equally beautiful, um, if not more, because at that point you're like truly up in the mountains. So for me, Squam, um, only because like going up there sets my soul right. Fishing wise, it has not been as kind to me as I would like it to. Uh, for favorite fishing spot, New Hampshire Brownie Factory. Been there in like three years. I went twice last year, and well, we did. I a, haven't been there in like three years. Yeah, it's because every time we bring it up, I'm like, let's not go because yeah. like I know guys that turning fish up there all the time, and even they have been saying it hasn't been fishing the same. Yeah. Kevin, what's up? Yo yo yo. <laughs> um, David, yeah, fish a lot North Shore, Worcester area. No, go fishing New Hampshire. Um, yeah, you need four wheel drive <laughs> for a lot of places that are small. There are a lot of crappy boat launches around here. And um, by crappy, I mean it's either just broken to all hell, it's all loose, like packed dirt. <laughs> or it goes down and it drops about a foot, and then it's sand, and then it's mud, <laughs> and then you're in the water. <laughs> or it has an incline of about three degrees. So you got to drive out like 100 feet before you get your boat off. Things like that to keep in mind. Uh, good pair of waterproof boots, a little nerve, and four-wheel drive. And you're good to go. Other than that, man, it's like it's all pretty much the same. It's all either kettle ponds or Send deep it. glacial ponds. Can't go wrong. Um, yeah, Winnie is great. Favorite big lakes, probably Winnie. Some great days there. Yeah, Travis, you've had some damn good days on that lake. Where Winnie? Justin, Connecticut River, obviously. I need to put in more time in the Connecticut River. That's a place that like we fished a few times, but it's always been either at the very end of the year or dead middle of the summer. Where, yeah, and I had some good days. My my best days, one of my best days I've ever had. Period, was with uh, DJ, DJ yeah. for that tournament. We yeah. had twenty one point two something pounds on five. It's a good day. I had a five and a half for the kicker for the day, and a four something. All largies. Yep. That was awesome. It's a damn good day. Stupid Senko. Um, <laughs> Matt, yeah, Team Beefmaster, Mister Goodman, Mashpee. Mashpee is actually a really good place. Um favorite pond in the cape i don't know i've only got six ponds and i don't like to name them because again i don't want to blow up places so that's not our state to be saying anything about any ponds down there yeah <laughs> um bob i'm is on the bucket list the problem is it's close to a four-hour drive for me because i have to go up and then over and then up and then over to get to it, it there is no straight shot it's um well from my house to north conway it was like two hours Towing the boat would be about two hours. Yeah, about two hours. And I think Umbagog is another hour and a half from there. That's like straight driving, no stops. That's a hike. <laughs> so, like, if I'm going to go a three and a half hour to four hour ride, I could be on Champlain. I could be on Candlewood. I could be anywhere down the Cape. <laughs> I'm going to those places. Um, I have not heard enough good things about Umbagog to make it worth that kind of drive. But I'll go up there because I it's a different kind of special. Um, all right, we, we did a little mini Q&A. Let's talk about this past weekend, buddy. It was fun. It was fun. It was fun. We had a lot of fun. We uh, we found them. We did. If you guys keep up keep up with us on Instagram and Facebook, we, we definitely found a couple good ones. It was started slow. No, it started good, and then it didn't. And then it got good again. <laughs> it was weird. <laughs> like, it got... Uh, Rogue, no, the ice is not on a Candlewood yet. Or it's very, very close. Um, yeah, it, w it was weird. Like, that front... I've had We've had a lot of people tell us that just fishing down there is different in general. Because it doesn't ice. Yeah. And there's no drastic change. So, right, that's the big thing. Oh, Woodhound, what's up? A local, a townie. Whoa. How you doing? <laughs> Hello. Um, yeah, like, we talked about with that with Kyle. Uh, during the largemouth se segment where you know up here when the ice when the cap pops off the fish like you know turn on um and i didn't know that for years because i wasn't that good of an angler but the last few years we've really taken advantage of that down there they don't really have that hard shift so it's kind of like it's weird we found a lot of fish we marked a lot uh, we both swung and missed on one or two i know i missed one I missed definitively i I think you missed two. Second or third cast on my rock pile, I got one. Yeah. And then I, I think the next cast after that, I missed one. And then that was it for, for me there. Yeah. So we went to a place down, not quite in the Cape, but pretty close. Uh, a couple hundred acres. 
shallow. Um, average depth there, if memory serves correct, it was like eight feet and the deepest point I think was 16 feet, but even that spot was pretty small. So, you know, nothing crazy for depth. Um, had some like bottom vegetation, but nothing crazy. And the place was stained. Like if there wasn't any like thick-ish bottom vegetation, for the most part, it was just kind of like bare bottom, but there was Mondo rock piles everywhere, which is... Yeah, I didn't butter. see I didn't see your fish until it was like three feet below the surface, and then I was like, "Holy shit!" Yeah, <laughs> it's funny because when we did our research before we left, like we talked about all that last week, right? Um, how we break down ponds. I literally did that Friday night and Saturday well, night. That's literally how we do it. We yeah, told you how we do it. And <laughs> like, and we also had the um, team beefmaster in here, our our buddy Steve. Um, he's been there before, so we had that added insight um, to uh, kind of help guide us too. So it's not like we just went out there and guessed. And what that ha place had to offer is what I always like to find, early spring. They had a bunch of big rock piles, and they went from super shallow to super deep relative to that lake. And they were against either the deepest point of the lake or shallow flats. Like, it's everything we talked about. And that's mm -hmm. where we caught every single fish, mm -hmm. right on those friggin' rock piles. <laughs> then we went to the river. Then we went to the river. But well, how did we do? Well, it, we should have done better. Steve, unfortunately, got skunked. He, he got a pickerel. He did get a pickerel. He got skunked. Um, he got skunked. <laughs> he had negative one for the day. Sorry. <laughs> There's yeah. rules in my boat. Rule one, pickerel not allowed in the boat. Rule two, two, um, every pickle you catch counts as negative one in your total count for the day. Mm -hmm. No other rules in the boat. Uh, don't smoke in it. Uh, don't spill ash in the carpet. I don't care if you smoke. Um, Just rub it. It goes away. <laughs> but it was, it was like, he was weird, man. Once the weather really started changing in the afternoon, like even the fish that we were marking weren't quite as numerous. And they were shifting. So, like, when that front came in, it really kind of threw that place off a little bit. And, you know, everything that seemed promising just kind of died. Um, I got two fish. One was the first one. It's 5.16 pounds on that Beast Coast Hustler. Black and blue with a black with blue flake matching trailer. Super small profile. Drag. That's all I'm doing moving my wrist. Just drag a little bit. It was negative nine yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> it's pretty good. Uh, John, that sucks. <laughs> um... Oh, we got to go backwards in the chat a little bit before we get too far. But, uh, and then I caught one later on, like probably two hours later, on a the red craw lipless, just yo yoing it real slow. Let it hit bottom, yo yo it, follow it down, burn it back a few foot, feet. Well, I say burn it, retrieve it a few feet, kill it, yo yo, and then just all of a sudden it got smoked. And it was a little, not even a pound. Yeah. And then yours was like maybe two pounds? Yeah. It probably like, yeah. And where was it? Probably two pounds. Deep in the rocks. Deep in the rocks. Black so. and blue. Sean, I saw your question. Black and blue. Black Damn and right. blue. <clears throat> black, black and blue. blue. Black and blue. What color were they? Black and blue. Blue and black. Black and blue. Black and blue. Black and blue flake? Blue flake and black. Blue flake and black? It's all the same. Fucking confused. <laughs> 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 Didn't take much. Nope. <laughs> um, so, yeah, it, it was good. And then... Um, it, it was weird. It looked like rain was coming at us, despite it, it said nothing on radar, and it was getting hellishly windy. This lake lies, like, perfectly in line with the wind direction that day. We dropped off Steve, looked back. Wind just got worse. We were freezing. We're like, screw this. Let's go home. And on the way home, we're like, well, wait a minute. We can fish the river because that's open. So we did. We stopped. It was only supposed to be up for an hour. We stopped for two hours. I got zero, but it was well worth the stop for him. Mm -hmm. Why'd you catch him on again? Fucking blue jig. Like a blue. And on, in what? What do you mean? Timber. Oh, in timber, yeah. They were deep in that timber. One of the two things we keep talking about. Black and blue jigs and timber. And rocks. <laughs> and rocks. And just like clockwork, man. We we worked, I know of a few spots there, and it was weird because there was still ice in some areas. And he literally caught three of his four fish. And I think I got a bit. Remember my trailer was pulled down? I missed one. Um, was in that same spot. So four bites. Off of two secluded stumps, 10 feet from the ice. Mm -hmm. 10, 15 feet from the ice, yeah. But those stumps were in the sun. Mm -hmm. And it was kind of protected from the wind a little bit. Just outside of the current, too. Yep. Current breaks. Rivers, you're fishing rivers, current breaks. If you find a big enough tree, throw it up toward, you know, I mean, I guess up towards the shore would be the biggest current break on that tree. So that'd be my, that's where I would throw. Yeah. So it, it was good. It was a, a productive, albeit a little bit slower than we would have liked weekend. But we still both caught bigs. Yours is 4.4? Yep. Yep. So, yeah, two bigs in the boat. Makes me feel good. Yeah, that's um, a good day. Back up a little bit. Brian, you did that drive in five hours. 
What drive? Where'd you go? <laughs> um, I'm a gog. Brian, oh. were you the guy that I ran into at the rest stop on 93 one year, two years ago? There was someone. We stopped at the 93 rest stop south on the way home. I stepped out of the truck. I took two steps, and I hear, Sean, <laughs> or Snoop. And I look back. I'm like, huh? I'm like, hey, I know your channel. <laughs> I was like, oh, oh cool, yeah, thanks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and it was it was a couple of guys from Connecticut. That's all I remember. Oh, yeah, you're coming from Rhode Island. I think they said Connecticut. Um, maybe they did say Rhode Island. Anyway. Um, no, beating the bank or offshore. Yeah. Uh, caves ground, like an underground club no one wants to talk about. No, you're not, not wrong about that, John. What happened? So what was the total count? I had two and you had four. And we both missed a couple. Yep. For Sunday. It's not bad. Um, Back to the win, baby. <laughs> <laughs> and drunk. John, Back are you the one that's going to be fishing with Mr. Martin? Brownie Factory. Which Brownie Factory? There's many Brownie Factories. There's even one that I'm just about ready to dub down in Mass. I haven't even been there yet, but I've heard enough about it that it could officially be the Massachusetts Brownie Factory. Oh. Yeah. That's the one I really want to go to. Yeah. If we could convince Mr. Uh, Sean there, Mr. Miller, to join us that far. But then, he should probably just come. I mean, well, he's coming down already anyway. Sean, it's like another 30 minutes farther driving, buddy. It's a haul. <laughs> ah, well, 20 minutes. Um, Where are we at? What color are we at town off this weekend? Um, Yeah, black and blue. Drinking game. Drink every time Andrew says black and blue. <laughs> and drunk. black and blue, black and blue, black and blue, black and blue, black and blue. See, Goodman drunk. knows. Yup. <laughs> so we're accurate. Down there is the uh, Massachusetts Brownie Factory. I'm already like I. We hammered so many friggin' giant smallmouth to end the year, and you said it like a dozen times already. Like I just want to go catch largemouth. Yeah, I'm over smallies. I just got my giant largies, so and I want to go back and catch another smallie. <laughs> well, then I'll focus on the largies then. <laughs> You can catch your little four-pound smallmouth, and I'll go for an eight-pound larger. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, it did get to a point, though. We, I was like, I would catch a four-pound smallie, and I'd just be like, what the fuck? Because <laughs> like, we're out there chasing it was that five insane. the whole time. It was so insane. Like, the smallest fish that we caught in that, like, six-week stretch was, like, a three, a three maybe? Two and a half, three? It was consistent, like, three and a half to four pounders. I was like, come on. Where's that five? Yeah. <laughs> that was insane, especially for the fact that, like, we were around people that had already caught a couple of fives that week, that weekend. One guy caught a six. Mm -hmm. I mean, literally in the spot, we were friggin' hammering for, what, four straight weeks? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, Quabbin. I'm actually going to go with Mr. Dale Wyman down to the Quabbin in the middle of the summer this year, and he's going to... Uh, Help me work on my last weak point for catching smallmouth, which is when they're suspend, uh, suspended out over nothing. Deep water, just chasing schools of bait. That's one of the only times I still struggle to really find him now. Uh, and he's pretty good at it. So he's going to he's gonna give me a little lesson, and that will be my first foray down into the Quabbin finally, which is pretty sweet. It's not that far from my house. I'd like to go to the Quabbin. I'm pretty sure he could probably take the two of us. Do a sweet little video. Who? Dale Wyman. He was in the stream yeah, last week, I think. If not, No, not last week, week before. Um, for all I know, he might be here again. Gus, I can see you trying to lick underneath my door. My dog's right there. <laughs> see the blue signs? Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I saw a thing about that the other day. I saw you comment on it. <laughs> oh, dear. What the fuck I was getting myself into? <laughs> uh, um, yeah, I'd see Justin Tiago know you guys are locals. You know Dale. Dale's a hammer. I watched him post like every freaking day. From the Quabbin last year, and I was like, oh, you gotta yeah, be kidding yeah. me. I know you're talking about now. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Retired guy. Yeah, he's like, a hammer. Yeah, he <laughs> makes those um, really nice um, blade baits, the Aaron's Edge blade baits, mm -hmm. and he paints other baits too. Um, ooh, favorite finesse rod? I can't answer that yet because I don't have it. Um, I actually do have Beta two. as of right now. Right. No, the real Brownie Factory in New Hampshire. We can go to that, even though it's completely iced in still. But if you guys want to wait for that, I'm totally down for waiting for that, John. Yeah, we can do that. Um, I was going to say, my favorite finesse rod, I actually have two from Luz. It's the Team Luz Custom Pro Speed Sticks. There's like $230 rods. Uh, those things, dude, they're really nice. I got a medium heavy, which is more like on the medium side of medium heavy, and a medium. Is that the one I have? No, you have the black one. That's just the Custom Pro Speed Stick. or yeah. the. No, you're right. It is. Yeah, They're, I still like it. It's wicked. I have four of those. Would jig be considered finesse? Yes, yes, it would. Okay, um, I know what mine is then. <laughs> and they're great because like it's 
that medium heavy is perfect for say throwing like a three eight ounce hustler like something uh, or even like a half ounce football jig with like a tube wrapped around it um, or just a spider grub whatever and but i can still throw some fairly light stuff like a one eighth ounce shaky hand if i want on it um i really like that rod but john from wicked custom rods is actually building me what will be by far the most expensive freaking finesse rod i've Dude, ever owned in my life that thing and is it's insane um all said and done well the rod blank alone is only 1.5 ounces so wrap your head around that for a second um, I think the total build on the rod is going to come in at something like 2.8 ounces, or maybe 3 ounces. 2.7, I think he said. For the rod, totally done. Like, guides, wrapped, sealed, uh, epoxy, everything. That's insane. And I'm going to pair that with my Lose Team Lose Custom Pro Speed Spin, which I think was 8 ounces, something like that. I mean, all said and done, it's going to be well under a pound. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I'm two, looking forward to that. 2.7, yeah. Two point, he's bringing this as we get 2.7. Yeah, he wants us to test that too. Um, Who? John? John, yeah, he wants us to test that before he finishes building out the rest. Okay. So we can give I feedback wanna, on it as well. It. Oh, we're, you're going <laughs> to. That'd be sick. Um, ever do any real upgrades? No, Kevin. I actually never have, and it's something that I keep meaning to do. I actually have a few reels I could. I am. I really I'm bringing mine to Joe's. Oh, you are? Which yeah, one? My lose. Oh, yeah, whatever. the one that just shit the bed. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Oh, sorry. And he's gonna put um. Crack the cradle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna do. I don't remember what he said he had for bearings, but I'm doing them. Probably like Abex seven or something stupid I'd like that. Crazy. Abex seven or nine. <laughs> Every time I hear people talk about bearings for. Uh, fishing reels, I think skateboards. Yep. All my friends used. To I skate. just saw Abex. I was like, skateboards. <laughs> are those ceramic? We don't like ceramic and skateboards. skateboards? Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um what would is uh, is here? This is legit. <laughs> hey Jason. Um <laughs> fish the Merrimack River. I thought about taking my jet boat there many times, just don't see any reports, turn the results to make more. Probably so, a better idea than having an outboard, honestly. Um I would. Gary, let's talk offline, buddy. So yes, depending on which section you go to. I'm one section go for a ride on a jet boat. Yeah. <laughs> we just go with him and then Brian cry. Oh, that'd be Brian's awesome. depot is pretty dope. Yeah, that thing's so sick. Um, so one section of the Merrimack, I, I, I've never fished. I fished one section of it one time when I was a kid with my dad, so it doesn't really count in my opinion. Um, I fished it then. Is it, uh, sorry, there's two sections. The northern section I've heard is much better for largemouth. It's completely ass backwards. And then the southern section is better for smallmouth. And in that particular section, apparently there are tank smallmouth. Um, to like, section, right? yeah, yeah, and I've actually heard that like the quantity of those quality sizes are more consistent than out your way on the Connecticut, which I had a hard time believing from the first person that told me, but then I had a couple of tournament guys I know like pretty well that I absolutely trust that said the same thing. They corroborated that there's big smallmouth in there. So we should go. We should actually right about now is the time to do it. Um, I quit. Let's go there tomorrow. We, we could do job. that Saturday instead of going to the other place. Yeah, but I didn't know it. You don't need to. You're right. We just need to know where the rock piles are. Maps to avoid and it. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I haven't done it yet, but we're gonna get there eventually. Hey, you're welcome, go, uh, Corey. I mean, I didn't get there too much because I rather like fish and river. Yeah, fishing mode. I hear you. It's just something different about fishing current. It always throws me through a loop. <sighs> See, Ooh. if you were a trout fisherman first, you would understand current. This is true. I almost failed my New Hampshire fishing guide uh, written test because it had too many trout questions on it. <laughs> and it was stupid ones, too. Actually, let, let's talk about that. There's one question that still sticks out to me that is, like, chapping me in my rear severely. Um, and mind you, again, this is the for the test to become a licensed New Hampshire fishing guide. And the whole premise of these tests, I've always been told, is to ensure that you know what you're doing from a safety perspective, that you are, by extension, a part of the fishing game department. So they want to make sure that regular people are in good hands if you decide to take them out bushwhacking the whites. Because that license allows you to do anything for guiding. It doesn't differentiate between someone like me, who's only ever going to take people out in my bass boat on lakes and ponds I know, and some like backwoods guides that literally wants to take the bushwhacking to random backwoods streams in the whites. All that said, I had one question. What is the best time to throw topwater for largemouth bass? 
70 and sunny, 70 and cloudy, 60 degrees, rain and cloud. Or D, none of the above. None of the above. All of the above. Thank <laughs> you. <laughs> I'm like, I want to stand up like, this is bullshit. <laughs> this is a you, stupid sir, question. You, don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> it, dude, it, that's, that's, a, that's a bad question. That's a purely opinion-based, subjective question that by no rights in any way, shape, or form should have any bearing whatsoever on my ability to guide someone safely. Period. <laughs> I'll guide you to the fish with those temperatures. <laughs> Dude, right? If you told me, like, 70 and cloudy, yeah, I'll give it a shot. 60, rainy and cloudy, especially after the last two years we just had. So? Uh, yeah, I'm going to throw a Duh. big old wake bait, <laughs> and we're going to smash big fish. Dude, the last day of that... Actually, the last two days of that week stretch we had last year was cloudy, 50s, because cold rain and sleet was moving in, and water temp was still only in the upper 40s to low 50s, and we crushed them on top water. That Stupid the, question. What day was that? That was the Friday at the very end of that stretch. The cloudy day? Yep. But then we did it the Thursday night before, too. Oh, uh, yeah. Yes, Justin, that's, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, I'm not joking, I'm not lying, nothing. That was literally it. 70 and sunny, 70 and cloudy, 60 rainy and cloudy. Or D, none of the above. <laughs> I'll never forget that question for the rest of my life. Because I just, it, it, I, I like legitimately, I had to sit back and like, huh, <laughs> how do I pick the right answer to that? It, you just can't win. Um, I would have ripped it up and thrown it in his face and be like, <laughs> no. <laughs> um, we're trying to pick your brain. Trick I'm questions. They were trying to pick your brain. Here, pick this. <laughs> yeah. So what was I supposed to do? Stand up and be like, "Oi, this is stupid." Oi, what the hell is this? <laughs> <laughs> um, at least I've seen many bass boats off 393 in Concord and Merrimack near Fort Eddy exit. Always wanted to try. You should go. That's actually a really good area. Um, there's usually tournaments in that section too. How oh, we fish tournaments in that. Huh? We fished tournaments there. Well, no, 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 not the, the section below that. Yeah, we fished the one tournament in the Hooksit section, like mm -hmm. between Hooksit down to um, the dam right in Manchester. Off to degrees. <laughs> oh my God, it was the hottest day I've ever fished. That was ridiculous. Um, what was we got? I'm trying to pick your brain, yeah. Uh, no, nothing about wind. Nothing about wind whatsoever. Why can't never catch bass from shore in April, Travis? Don't even. <laughs> Who said that? Travis Green. Oh, you didn't see his comment last week, by the way. So Travis is the community manager for Empire Jerky. He said that they were going to put you on the team. Lucky I am. And um, <laughs> your code was going to be, what was it? Travis was catch bigger fish than Sean or something like that. Catches bigger fish, I forget. <laughs> and you didn't see it, and I wasn't about to bring it up to your attention at the time. <laughs> I, can I start my own, like, off-brand backboat jerky? <laughs> <laughs> Oh my god, you're the backboater jerky. <laughs> extra spicy. <laughs> oh, extra salty. Extra, yeah. <laughs> extra salty with a little, with a little heat. <laughs> Taste of victory. <laughs> Community manager, you joke. I, sorry, what are, what are you? What are, okay, I'm sorry. Better at fishing. That's what it was. Better at fishing. <laughs> um, Is that a thing? But my dog is Better on the other fishing. side of this yeah, you door. Can hear jerky. And, yeah, you know, all <laughs> please let me. He's like, oh, dad. <laughs> <laughs> Panoptics live target mega live cheating. Excuse me. Who said that? I, are we being for serious? What is that question? What I'm question? just curious. That comment. That. Panoptics yeah. live target mega live cheating. Okay. Oh, Ferris. Now there's a good question. Choosing between throwing a chatterbait versus swim jig, what factors are most important to consider? What makes one better than the other? Um, you want to tackle that one first? Jig, what factors are most I, You just said this, but I didn't comprehend. That's fine. You want to <laughs> tackle that one first? Teacher. I'll let you hit it first. One better idea. for. So actually, the other day, I did go out and throw a chatterbait because my buddy Gordy, who owns um, Gordy's Custom Lures, that's the name of it, right? Yep. Gordy's Custom Lures, yes. Um, he had made a bladed jig, and um, he threw me one one day the other day, and I was like, well, I'll just go out and try it. So I literally went out, and I caught four fish within 15 minutes. Was that two days ago? That was two, yeah, two days ago? I think it was two days ago. You're going to yourself. And <laughs> fish mode. <laughs> Drink up, buddy. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I don't know. Uh, versus swim jig. I just don't like swim jigs. 
I have no confidence in swim jig. That's why I don't fish them. I tried last year. I got bit a couple times. So then I picked up a chatterbait and I caught the fish. So. We'll get them on it this year. I got I got some better conditions coming. Um, John, I will come back to your question in a minute. Um, why can't I think? I just saw that. <laughs> <laughs> Travis, I'll come back to your question too. <laughs> uh, so for me, between chatterbait and swim bait, you're sorry, swim jig, the worst fisherman in the world. <laughs> chatterbait, man, it really depends on what kind of structure I'm fishing, like, and what time of the year. That's man, it, uh, <laughs> I like both a lot, and I've done really, really well. If I'm fishing like really shallow water, and I'm just completely choked up in weeds and vegetation of all kinds i'm never picking up the chatterbait despite the fact it works great it's just gonna mop up everything you throw through um even around like shallow timber dude that thing just wants to roll right over and get stuck non-stop i cannot get any of my chatterbaits to crawl through timber that's when the swim jig comes out i'm fishing any sort of thick cover whatsoever where i cannot get a chatterbait through i'm either going swim jig or i'm going spinnerbait and i'll make them work um, if I can get a little bit away from that, we're going to work a little bit deeper water. If I can get away with straight retrieving that chatterbait, or if I want to yo-yo it a little bit, work it off the bottom, um, almost just like a regular jig, but then you'll kind of swim it a little bit, then I'll get away with that. Uh, that's really what it comes down to. And then there's plenty of areas where either one is interchangeable. Sometimes they want that slightly bigger and slower presentation of the swim jig. Excuse me. Jesus Christ, I keep burping. Um... But yeah, that, that's pretty much it, how it gets back, how I break those two up. I just look at it like if I see grass, I could throw a swim jig through there. Ooh, Tiago, you're a man after my own heart. But then I also look at it and I could see I could just like kind of toss like a Texas rig in there yeah. and do the same thing. So it's funny. Tiago just said my thoughts. Spinnerbait greater than chatterbait. Yes. They're both great. I will yeah. absolutely go to a spinnerbait 10 times over 10 over a chatterbait. I've caught the vast majority of my five pound, five pound plus fish on a spinnerbait. The second biggest fish I've ever caught in my life, which was my PB up until last year, was spinnerbait. The third biggest fish, which last year would, would have been my second biggest fish I ever caught, was a chatterbait. Was a chatterbait. <laughs> but I like consistency wise for like putting more fish and bigger fish in the boat, spinnerbait. Ten out of ten. They're both gonna make the thump and displace water, so. Yep. If the fish is within range, it's going to hit it. Um, Travis, to answer your question seriously, though, like when you're up in the lakes region, if you're talking bigger lakes, get to where the current is, man. I know guys that fish wherever you can find the current from the shore, and they'll do well. A little bit more for trout because you're talking mostly trout bodies of water up there, but you can make that work. But, dude, like there's just not a lot of good shore bang and structure around the way up there, like, this time of the year it's just tough you know you can't get good access to a lot of these spots however what did we learn from that winnie altercation that the public only owns up to the high water mark as defined by state department of environmental services whatever it is uh by the state and they draw winnie down pretty far mm -hmm. so if you're in the lake you're on public property food for thought um yeah, lady. <laughs> <laughs> and I do agree with fishing mode. Slow it down. <laughs> Travis says you're only allowed to eat dragon's breath. Yeah, cold. I <laughs> saw that. I am ignoring that. That would <laughs> hurt. I don't even know what it is, but it sounds horrible. Oh, good to get out there again. Love the jerk. Yeah, John Mango, jerk bait. So we, we actually tried that like hell, but that's the thing. Like, why I tried so hard for so many years to get good with the jerk bait because a lot of the time, especially this early in the year, as you know, jerk bait where they want it they're going to be up in the middle and they're kind of feeding the middle of the water column yeah. they're not doing that they're feeding down and that's where the jig comes in handy we mm -hmm. couldn't get bit on the jerk bait and all three of us tried fishing it at some point non-stop pretty much the whole day yeah i really wanted a jig bite though yeah so. felt good to get it on that little yeah. guy <laughs> oh yeah that's right i set the hook on that thing and you're like yep that's it <laughs> yeah i turned around steve's like i don't know and you're like nope he's not moving i know that's a good fish <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah when you do this and you don't start reeling in, yep. and then I know it's a good fish. <laughs> Just waiting for him. That's actually um, a, another topic we can talk about. I was talking to the Dragon Custom Tackle guys earlier because I was reaching out to other people for like good topic ideas for tonight and, in case we didn't want to, you know, if, if something else came up that we didn't want to do a Q&A. And one of the things that they um, brought up, Bryson uh, said, 
you should talk about fighting a fish. Like everything that goes into hooking and fighting and landing a fish. Hook sets. How do they differ from what hooks you're using, what line you're using, what techniques? They don't send it. Right. <laughs> um, you know, how does your line come into play for that? What do you do with your drag and everything? Lisa had actually asked the same question too. Um, that's something we can cover later, uh, but I want to keep it up with the chat. So I, I'll, I'll go to that when the mm. chat dies. Um, Grat, Chatterbait pre-spawn to early post-spawn, then switch to a swim jig unless the water has some stain. That's actually pretty solid advice. <laughs> yep. Chatterbait pre-spawn is killer. And yeah, spinnerbait, I won't pick up until the water is like closer to mid 50s. Like mid, like 55 has usually been that like pretty consistent magic number. I feel like this is pretty carbonated. Yeah, it is. Sorry. I feel like you really <laughs> like to go after the smallies with the spinnerbait at that time. Goddamn right. You I do. personally. Oh, dude, once the like if the wind's ripping and it's been steady, consistent into one area where I know the bass like to be anyway at that time of the year, I'm picking up this. I'm gonna live and die by it. Um actually that one. Ah, sorry. Oh. That one from Rocky Ledge. That's his perch. Which we'll do a little product spotlight for a second here. If you guys are looking for Either he does some, well, last I checked, he does some custom painted uh, crankbaits, which that little brown craw is money. Um, and he makes, no joke, the best, most durable spinnerbaits on the market. And he's got all three different si um, styles of blades. He's got willow leaf, and that's kind of like another yellowy perch pattern. Um, I think it's Indiana blade is what it's called. It's yeah. between a willow and a Colorado. I like this one. That is another one of my favorites. If you couldn't tell, because it's all beat to hell. Um, and then he does stuff like this where it's just straight up Colorado blades. Um, absolute most durable bulletproof spinner baits you can get on the market. Bar none. There's a reason why I asked to be on the team because I live and die by his, his spinner baits. They're freaking killer. And he makes a bunch of other great stuff too. He makes some killer jigs. So if you guys are interested, absolutely take a look at Rocky Ledge Tackle. There's a link to him down in the video description below. Um, back it up. Anyone fishing on the North Shore yet? Can't answer that. Hmm. Tenant spinnerbait, second most versatile bait, only behind a jig. Yes. And that's the thing, Tiago, that I think a lot of people don't understand or maybe just don't consider. And I was that guy for a long time, too. You, you see this and you just think, okay, bomb it and burn it. You can fish that like a jig. You can literally just bottom hop and balance it. I rarely do, but you could. You work like a square bill, you know, get it up against. That's how I got my PB, deflecting off timber. There's this one log I knew about, and we were already hitting them there the you know, last trip out, and I was like, I'm going to get that perfect cast around it, hopefully, and burn it back and uh, just deflect it hard. And I did. I literally got the perfect cast. I got two cranks on it after it deflected around the log, and thump. <laughs> <laughs> that was amazing. I'll never forget that bite. <clears throat> but you you can throw it around everything. It deflects off cover so well. It comes through vegetation pretty well, too. I love spinnerbait. Um... Colors of spinner baits for sunny versus cloudy or water temps. Colors of spinner baits for sunny versus cloudy. Uh, I don't know that really. For sunny versus cloudy, I don't really play around with color too much. Sunny um, and windy, I usually go for like a perch color if I do throw a spinner bait because I don't really throw them that often. But when I do, it's fun. <laughs> yeah, and it colors. Yeah, for the for those conditions like sunny versus cloudy, I really haven't noticed a difference. Water clarity. Sunny, I like the gold. Yeah, the gold so, okay, you're right. Yep. And then um, for cloudy, I would like a, like a silver blade. So, as he was, well, actually, this has got both. That's got, and then these are pretty beat up, but that's kind of like a coppery blade, goldish, well, more copper, and then it's got that silver. So, sunnier is kind of like, watch the mic. I know, I know. <laughs> very slow. Um, silvery chrome, like better for sunny days. Uh, it's going to reflect light nicely for kind of lighter, lighter, lower light conditions. Copper would be better. Um, I was thinking from a skirt color perspective, answering that question yeah. at first. Um, but for like water clarity, I, I go, well, I don't really think about water clarity too much for like what kind of colors or different types of spinner baits I'm going to throw. I go water temp more than anything um, and what kind of bite I'm looking for. Like I've got days when the water will still be like upper 40s um, in a very rare instance. It's literally one pond I'm thinking of. Uh, but even still, that those same areas when the water gets like mid to upper 50s and it really starts going off, 
I like hmm. either perch or bluegill colors um, or something obnoxiously bright and more willow leaf something blades. Wo- yeah. Centuries. So I can burn the thing and get it cooking because they're just going to feast on it when the conditions are right for it. If I want to slow down, then I'm going to go to the Colorado blade. It's going to throw a little more thump when I slow things down. Um, works a little bit better as the water's colder, so you're going slower. It, it's just a, a more obnoxious and easier to find target for them. So that's that's kind of how I break down my spinnerbaits. Where else? And it can be fished all season. Yep, Tiago, you're right. Uh, fishing? No, uh, Gary, no tournament trails this year. We actually, I think I texted Andrew about three different trails. What we were thinking about Back Bay. Um, because that's a cool trail. I know the guys that run it. They're wicked nice guys. Um, four tournaments, 350 bucks, I think, per boat, per tournament. You get to prepay for everything, but it's 100% payout. Like, mm-hmm. it's it's intended to be a big money thing. I think they only pay out to five places. First place is like three three grand or something like that. Like, it's, I was like, yeah, if we're going to put in time on a tournament trail, that's the way to do it. Four lakes you can, you know, focus in on the whole season. Um, I, I very legitimately very closely considered doing the Bassmaster Opens this year as a co-angler. Yeah, that would have been cool. It would have been, but I really had a hard time with the idea of getting backboarded by people. I've heard mostly good things about being a co and then some absolutely terrible things for experiences of being a co. So I was like, you know what? If the time comes that I'm going to try and go for the Opens, I want to fish. I want to be the angler because... I don't mind sharing stuff with people in the back, but I know not everybody's like that. Um, and I would have a hard time with that. I'm not even going to hide the fact. I would That would chap my ass if I got with somebody that was like, nope, and wouldn't let me fish anything and just backboard me all day. That would suck. Um, and then what was the other? Oh, and then the uh, New Hampshire Bass Nation opens. Because those are fun. Um, John Foster's a really nice guy. They run a good trail. But too many Winnipesaukee tournaments. I just I hate fishing that lake, man. Because mm. I can only fish on Sundays because my life with kids and my wife's work schedule. Tiago, yeah. I, I would like to do like one or two, a couple of those. So I was getting there. Tiago, your tournament trails are the only ones we're going to be fishing this year. Those your are, opens. Those are fun. Yep. And it, it's we can kind of fly by the seat of our pants. Like, I had a hard time signing, like, do I want to do tournaments this year or do we want to travel? And we kept shooting the shit about it. And like even my wife chimed in and she's like, just travel. Like, screw it. Go have fun. So, mm-hmm. not thinking about that more, I was like, yeah, that sounds fun. Like, I'm legitimately going to do probably three trips, just weekend trips up to the St. Lawrence when I can, because I can. Um, I I don't I don't like fishing tournaments if I can't put in the time to really, like, go out there and give it my best shot. You know, like, I don't, I sometimes I like going into them blind, but for the most part, like, man, if I'm going to fish a trail, I want to go out there and put in the time and, and like, try and have a good go at it. So, we'll be doing um, just a couple little small things with Tiago's guys, and be pretty much it. Other than that, we're gonna be traveling all over freaking New England. We're gonna just try and catch some big fish. I want to catch mm-hmm. big freaking. Lar- I want to catch a PB largey this year. That's my goal. I I had a goal this year to learn smallmouth and catch a PB smallmouth this year, and executed to a T. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> Three times. <laughs> oh, yeah. New PB, new PB, new PB. <laughs> Four times. <clears throat> Four, oh, God, that's right, because it was the little place, and then there was that. There was two at that one place in the same day. No, yeah. So the first one was the little place at night, dragging yeah. a jig in the rock pile. Mm-hmm. And then the next one was the new place, the first time we went, when you were in your boat, and you're mm-hmm. like, ah, I'm just fair. I'm not even moving this jig. And I watched back the video. Stroking the hell out of I thing. had no idea. Uh, I'm spare parts. I had no idea what's going on. Um, did you set it twice there or just the once? I think you only had just the one. The, the second was, one was... Because it was 4-1, and I beat that with a, the 4-4. Four, four, and then I beat that with the... No, dude, yeah, you broke it twice that day. Because you had like a 4-2, and then you had the 4-4. Four, four. So you went 4-1, 4-2, 4-4. Four, 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 four. And then we're out at the Vermont Brownie Factory, and then that twice in that same, what was it, four pounds, 13 ounces, or 412? 414. 414, and then you had the five even. And five even, yeah. Ridiculous. Talk about execution, boys. <laughs> Herda. Herda. Um, <laughs> Herda. 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 Hey, Rugal Streamer, how you doing, buddy? I kind of got the audio fixed. Thank <laughs> you. Um, we'll still get together this weekend, hopefully, and I can iron out the other things. One of the things I can't have 
I couldn't figure out how to get my music from like all the MP3s I've downloaded to be able to play in the background. All copyright free music. I can't. The software won't let me do microphone and music. Um, it is what it is. Sean, I might. We'll see about joining your your club up there as long as you don't mind us fishing like one. Um, yeah, Jason. That so that's essentially what Back Bay is. Like they, it's a high payout trail. It's the highest payout trail in New Hampshire um, because Which it's one, back bay. Yep, yeah. it's really big buy-in. They've actually got a pretty good turnout. I think fifteen to twenty boats. I think fifteen is what they shoot for, um, and they get everybody signed up at the beginning of the year, and they only pay out three or four spots. I think four. So it's like it's good money if you get in the top four. Like if you put it fish third, I think you make your money back on the season. But it's all hammers in there. Um, right. I, I wouldn't mind doing something like that. Again, if I'm going to do a trail, I want just a handful of tournaments that I can really like focus in on. And big money, big chances at big money. Um, Justin Wood. Justin, was that from the river? Your 8.38? That's insane. If it wasn't in New Hampshire, it doesn't count. <laughs> I'm kidding. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Winnie. Oh, that's right. That's right. I remember that. Um, I remember you telling me that before. Three, eight, damn. Dude, when it comes to largies, Winnie is good for it. Yeah. And I'm not just saying that because my PB last year. Yeah, like, I I, I focus <laughs> on... I don't focus on I pay attention to all the tournament results. Um, pretty much all of them. Anything that says Winnie, I'm always curious. I'm checking the weigh-in results. Unless I'm mistaken, smallmouth have not been good. There's not been that many four-plus smallmouth coming out of uh, Winnipesaukee lately. But... There's been some big large mouth come out of there. It's pretty crazy. I've heard of multiple sevens. sevens going multiple. Dude, like the last three years in a row, there's been like a half dozen or more sevens that have been coming out of Winnie in like April and May. Um, cold, cold water. It's crazy. I think there was an eight. And then Squam last spring had two sevens in the same tournament. Jesus. I know the guy that caught one of them. I was talking about it. He's like, dude, he's one of the first fish I caught, and I just couldn't get anything much of anything else. I think he said he had one rat. Um... I, I, they were close. They were within like an eighth of a pound of each other. I don't remember the exact weights, but he caught the seven something. If you catch even a six in a ter- tournament in New Hampshire, you pretty much got locker locked up for the day. Mm. It's not that often that in the same tournament there are multiple six pluses, let alone multiple seven pluses. Guy comes with a seven. Like if I caught a seven, I wouldn't even think twice about it. But like that's locker for the day. Come in for someone else to pull up a bigger seven. That sucks. <laughs> That would be my luck. <laughs> First seven in a tournament, my PB, and someone comes in, look, I caught an eight. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Two uh, years in a row at Squam. Nice. That's thank you. Sweet. What is it? Cobra? Cobra? How do you say your name? I'm going to say, I'm just going to call you Cobra. Thank you, Cobra. That was, um. Cobra Stones. Cobra Stones. <laughs> Cobra Kai. Um, I haven't seen that. Love the video of your PB all winter. Yeah, that was that. That yeah, was, was a good one. I wish I was there. I wish somebody was there with me. I needed someone to hug. <laughs> so emotional. <laughs> really wish I was there for that. Dude, that was like, God, what did I say? 13 minutes from the moment I saw a fish till I hooked it? Mm-hmm. 13 or 14, something like that, yeah. Like, what an insane way. It's like, I mean, it was in September. I wasn't bed fishing. And to be able to see a fish of that size within feet of you and just knowing, oh, my God, it's here, and that's the fish I've been looking for, and especially after this friggin' year. Everything I did this spring to go out and try and catch another PB and then to go out and actually see it and just know, like, I am casting on top of this fish and I hope beyond hope that it's going to bite and it finally does. And I landed it. Like, everything went right for once. And it was great. Oh, dude, we need to back up. I can't see. Ah, who asked the question about live scope and everything and and cheating? I want to make sure I... I, I, We we totally forgot to circle back on that. Um, Don't worry, Mark. You're late, but not late, late. Uh, favorite tool in your boat, Altrex Live Scope. Okay, so number one is Altrex, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. Number two? My favorite tool? Yeah. Yeah. Just <laughs> <laughs> Rude. Sorry, everybody. <laughs> I really love him. <laughs> Altrex, absolutely. Is number one, mm-hmm. without shadow of doubt. I said it and before, then? and I'll say it again. Hold that thought. Go on your end then. Mm-hmm. If my boat blew up. Caught on fire out there right now, and I had to go buy a new boat tomorrow. Everything, the entirety of what I could get, would be centered on at least just the right size boat and an Altrex or something that has spot lock feature. I'm not tied into just owning Altrex. I love the Low Rance Ghost. I don't care as long as it has a spot lock feature. 
everything, even just straight up sonar, everything comes second to that. Because with that Altrex, I can fish all year long in any conditions and never have to worry about my boat ever again. That has been, without a shadow of a doubt, the single greatest thing that has ever come to bass fishing. Yeah, it's sick. It's amazing. It's really cool. Anyway, and then after that, I know what you're going to say. 60. Yeah, damn right. Is. How many times have we said it now? <laughs> At least a dozen times just this year. Yeah. Like, how many big fish do we owe? Never mind just fish in general. How many big fish do we owe to that 360? Mm-hmm. Not because we can see the fish. No, because we know exactly what we're casting at. Like, like that we keep calling it the juice, right? And we're out fishing. Like, oh, that's the juice because it, it is. You find that perfect isolated structure that, yeah, you could go and find with 2D sonar if you go right over it and you can mark it or you find it with your side imaging, whatever. Um, even sometimes being shallow, like semi-stained water, you can... Or like semi clear water, but you got to back up off of it and make that cast to it. That 360, excuse me, sorry. I will literally lay my, like, if I'm looking at my graph, I'll say to him, there's, I'll lay my rod down. That way, uh, 50 feet, big rock pile. <laughs> Four pounds. Dude, like, <laughs> it's worth its weight in gold. It and is. I would uh-huh. love to get live scope, and I had to make the choice. I could have gotten either live scope or make a 360. And Mega 360 was, to me, a no-brainer. Because with that, you can see everything. I mean, if you're a big tournament guy and you're hammering the same couple of lakes over and over again for the last 10, 20 years, live scope would make more sense. Because you, you already know everything in these places anyways. Hone in on it. I like to travel and try new places. So side imaging takes, you know, the 50,000-foot overview and brings it down to, like, a 1,000-foot overview. That's a good question. And then the 360 takes that 1,000-foot and brings it down to, like, the 50-foot. And then, for me, live scope goes that next step further and breaks it down to the inches and really hones in, like, okay, I have found a couple of offshore trees. They look great for this time of the year. <clears throat> Pull up, point at it. Oh, there's nothing here. I don't even need to worry about it. Waste my time. I'm out. <laughs> and to be fair, we can actually tweak the 360 settings to not mm-hmm. be live, but kind of close. And I can see fish moving around on it. It's tough. We had, but with a practice side, you can do we it. We had this one rock pile in the – what the hell was that? New Hampshire Brownie Factory. That you said you knew was there, and then we get up to it, and we're like, holy crap, this is a boulder Yeah, trail. yeah, 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 yeah. I remember you that now. You could see, you could set it out to, what, 300 feet or 150 feet? Or 170 feet, I think, is the max, and that's diameter. So 85 feet yeah. from center of the boat, out. Around, 360. Yeah. And we had it, and we looked out, and it was like, huh, there's some fish on there. There's got to be. Yep. Pulled up, I don't know, four or five off of it. So I saw the wind one, the wind question. Wait. What is the strongest wind that the spot lock has held you in? <laughs> a lot. <laughs> you said 25 plus? Um, 25, 25, yeah. Well, I would I'd say... I'd have to say at least 40. That day in the St. Lawrence last yep, year. That's the, it was like one of our last days there. With the current, too. No, wait, no. The current was going the opposite direction that day. Um, how? It's a river. Um, sorry, the, the, w- <laughs> the wind was going the opposite direction of the current. <laughs> no, it wasn't. It was coming right at us. Oh, wait, no. It goes- there was one day it was going the other way because even TJ was like, dude, there's one point where the wind is blowing us faster than the current was the other way because the current was ripping. But we had a couple of days where we were out. Well, all right, just going straight wind. We've been out in 40 mile an hour gusts, and I only have the 80 pound Ultrax on my 19 foot, what is it, 12 inch That's or 10 foot. inch? Um, 18 foot, 12 inches. 20 feet. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> Jesus Christ. I, I, 19.8, I think it is. I'm an engineer and my life works in in uh, inches, like not, so I'm thinking 16th of an inch in my brain. Yeah. So I was thinking like 12, 16th is three quarter of a foot. Yeah. Anyway, um, nine, 19 feet, nine inches, 10 inches, I forget, something like that, with an 80 pound. And it holds it just fine. Um, even up to 40 mile an hour gusts. Might push it a little bit, but you're not like, oh, we're completely screwed and gone off our spot. Yeah, no, that thing is on town. <sighs> And it holds you. <laughs> it definitely holds you. Yep. Yeah, that, it's it's impressive. Um, no, I haven't, <laughs> Brendan. I've not had any more yuppie Flatlander dock owners. Um, <laughs> nineteen feet, twelve inches, twenty feet, maybe. Uh, <laughs> shut up, J Bass. <laughs> J Bass. Um, <laughs> John, it was you that asked live scope and everything. Cheating? No, absolutely not. Um, gotta catch him. And even if you didn't mean it to that extreme of cheating, 
Just because you can see the fish doesn't mean squat. Um, I know people, and I've talked to people that have done work for people that have way more money than knowledge. And just because you put all these tools in your boat doesn't mean dick at the end of the day. If you don't know what to throw in the right conditions and how to make fish react, like anybody can see a fish and throw something at it. And it may not necessarily be the perfect presentation, but that's one of the things we've been really working on the last couple of years is like, we know we're on fish. What do you need to do to get them to actually bite? That That's that last step. I mean, TJ, Smallmouth Freaks, he has... Live scope. He has live scope. And he was marking, I don't know, a, a freaking a bunch of fish on his. And he was on it for, what, a half hour or so? If yeah. not longer. And he couldn't get him to bite. Until you threw... <laughs> Until I, I threw <laughs> Just right threw something of his different. boat about 50 feet from him. And pulled out a four and a half? Four and a half pound largie. Yeah. Out of 50 feet of water. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, not me, Tom. <laughs> no, yeah, Vermont Bradley Factory. It's uh, it, it's just another tool, but any tool is useless if you don't know what you're doing, how to properly utilize it. And that's really what it comes down to. You know, like 360 for me is great because I know exactly what it is I'm looking for. Um, so, All right, Justin, thanks, man. I appreciate it. And uh, we might be able to make that. We'll, I'll keep you posted. Later, man. Um, Yeah, man, like all these tools don't mean anything if you don't know what you're doing. You know, like same deal. Like somebody can go out and buy... My, my custom drop shot rod I'm getting. Like, that with this reel, we're talking like $900, like, total for that combo. And it's going to be one of the lightest, most sensitive freaking rods ever built. That's not an exaggeration. It is using nothing but the absolute most premium components. That doesn't mean shit if some idiot decides to throw a 20-pound braid on it. Or not braid. Um, you know, mono. Um, you know, they, you don't... You need to be able to properly utilize the tools. And it, it takes time and research to really understand... What are you seeing? Why are you seeing it? And given everything else that's going on, this is going to give you my best opportunity to still catch them. And you still have to do it. Like, it's just I mean, so even much. on my boat, all I have is 2D. And I don't even use it half the time. Yep. I, it literally sits in my locker, and I just don't even use it. I go out there blind. <laughs> I did that forever. For many years. I didn't have GPS until... Oh, boy, when was that? Seven years ago? Maybe eight years ago now. Yeah, okay, eight years ago now. It was the first time I got a GPS. And before that, I had one little four-inch graph that gave me water temp and depth. And that's, that's, all, that's, that's, that's all I want is water. If I go to a place where I, that I don't know, that's what I do. Whoa! Grat! What in the hell? Dude, thank you! Could have made it one more penny. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no, this is what YouTube works. Thank you so much. Dude, That's thank awesome. you. That's amazing. Ah, <laughs> oh, thank you for tuning in. Dude, thank you for that. That Jesus, that just blew the previous best donation out of the water. Yeah, by like $10. No, All right, now we're going to keep it coming. Let's keep it <laughs> uh, Dude, thank you. That's that awesome. was awesome. Thank you. Um, uh, You know, to, to speak a little bit on that with like the money, um, there's other things we're working on to get things going to... Uh, hopefully allow people to help continue to contribute to contribute to the channel. Um, like I just spent, oh God, um, $340 today on new mics for the boat. These mics are 200 or a hundred bucks each. The thing it plugs into is another hundred. The other thing I'm going to have for the headphones is another 40. Like, dude, I spent a lot of money on this. So we're trying to figure out a way to recuperate some of this money. Cause I still want to get a nice camera to replace this thing, um, and take it on the boat. So we're hoping that with community support, we're, like every dime that has been donated on these streams so far is just sitting there in the bank. It's not going anywhere because it's going to reimburse for all this and then eventually pay for like a nice digital camera that we can use for the streams and take out the boat, maybe stream from there, but at least, very least, take like really nice pictures. Yeah. So it's all, everything's getting put back into this. So thank you all. Say, grat, thank you, man. That was, that's nuts. Thank you. Um, that's cool. Depth and water temp. What do you mean fishing mode? Depth. Oh, well, yeah. Like in regards to like how to use all the electronics and stuff or something a little more specific. What okay. you looking for? That's all I need. Depth. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Okay. <laughs> yep. I understand. I forgot what we were talking about before. We just uh, blindsided by. Yeah. <laughs> insane donation. <laughs> you beat me to it. <laughs> uh, yeah, dude. Like you can do so much with just depth and water temp. Um, Certainly makes life easier if you can mark spots too. Um, I am weird. I cannot remember like anything 
other than my family's birthdays and I can't even remember that. Even regular like boulders on every freaking lake I've ever been to. I, like yeah, I can dude. I I dude, I can't remember people's names for anything. I can't I can't remember anything, but if you took me back to Squam, which I've been to twice in the last four years now, and both those trips were just last year. There's a couple of areas I didn't even fish that I last fished four years ago. I could still take you back to the same rock piles I know about, not even use my graph. I could just drive right over them. Mm-hmm. I'm, I'm weird like that. Yeah, I am too. But that's my passion. So it's it. At I don't, the same time, it's not I don't really care weird. to remember anything else. <laughs> <laughs> See, I try to care, and I still can't, man. I, my brain just doesn't want to do it. I gave up on trying to think, <laughs> remember things. <laughs> doesn't work for me. Go! Ferris! Okay, I'm in. <laughs> Thanks, dude. <laughs> dude, thank you. Holy crap. Those two donations just, like, I think matched the entire, like, lifetime of donations we've gotten so far. That's nuts. Thank you, Ferris. You're the man. That's awesome. Greatly appreciate it. Um, damn. Well, I'm taking it back. I don't even know what else to say. <laughs> uh, Black and else? blue. Black Drink and blue. up. <laughs> <laughs> Who else has got some questions? Um, what was the other thing? Oh, right. So while we're waiting for a few more questions to come in, because it's not that late, but before it gets too late, let's talk. I just want to make sure nobody else messaged me. Oh, 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 oh. Um. I had, I'm actually, we already talked about spin rates. So, uh, it's hammer time on Instagram. He right. asked me the question bef- right before the stream went live about spinner baits. And we actually already covered that. So that works. Um, all right, let's, let's talk about this weekend. So actually I don't drink unless I'm on this anymore. Kevin, that Bring something else. Okay. is a, yeah. <laughs> so Sean, unfortunately you're the only one that drinks. Cause I know John said it. He's on keto. I'm on keto. He just doesn't drink alcohol anymore because it messes up his stomach. is even worse than mine. Um, let's talk this weekend before we're waiting for a few more questions to come in. And then, Kevin, I'm going to come back to you for what you just said about an auction for a trip for us. Um, everything's starting to really ice out around here. I drove by. I'm looking at forecasts. That's why I got this up. Uh huh. Well, oh, so this is messed up. I'm going to get to that. Whether this, <laughs> this is going to complicate things a little bit. Um, so we're we're in southern New Hampshire, like right in the smack dab in the middle around the Master New Hampshire border. And everything just immediately around us is still fairly well iced in, but it's close. There's a few places I won't mention that are open or very nearly open, just over the border, like um, down near Nashua area. I stopped at a couple of places on my way home, anywhere like Lowell area and up. Dude, it's coming. A lot of these places are either like... 80% open or like 50 to 80, 90% open. Like I think by the end of this weekend, a ton of stuff is going to be a hundred percent. Maybe even after all this warm rain we had today, after next weekend, after next week, it's going to be open. by next weekend. Like everything up to the lakes region is going to be open. Especially after next Friday. Uh huh. Heavy rain in mid fifties. So right now we had a couple warm days after that cold front um, rolled through on Monday. We have a warming trend for the next few days. And if I'm just going by Southern New Hampshire, we have North winds and it's going to be blustery tomorrow. Saturday is light and variable winds. Sunday is just sunny. If we go down towards the Cape area, which is, I think, where we're still going for Sunday, it's where it gets a little more complicated because both here and down towards the Cape is going to get a mix of rain and snow tomorrow and then rapidly warm up. Um, Saturday, That's what happened last year. it's going to be a 10-degree difference. Yeah. It's 10 degrees warmer up here in southern New Hampshire than where it's going to be down there. Bro! Rogue! Dude! Shout the is going on here this is insane <laughs> thank you holy crap <laughs> you guys are awesome thank you rogue that's sweet that's insane. Oh, apparently you can do it even 25 <laughs> just, you're the one that said Call why can't you do it anymore <laughs> 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 there you go mark saying connecticut river is 90 percent open um connecticut not the river you just said connecticut c- c- oh thank you i didn't catch that Mm-mm, not yet water's not up yet <laughs> Trust me, we have an inside source that's 10 minutes from the lake. Yeah, I know. <laughs> when it's go time, we're going. I know. He knows. He keeps me apprised. Um, right? So I don't necessarily think wind is going to be a fact. Oh, wow. Northwest winds moderate on Saturday. This is down by the Cape. So pretty much anywhere from here down south where we still got open water or getting open water, weather conditions are going to be pretty much the same, except it, the further south you go, it's going to be cooler. Nonetheless, it looks like it's going to be calm. It's going to be high sun, sunny skies, no wind, no rain, no no clouds, uh, and a warming trend. So I think as long as you can find water that has been open or for at least the last couple days since we just like got past that cold front on Monday, 
they're going to be biting. It might be a little hard, might be a little slow. Anywhere you can get steep banks, rocks, timber, get in them and look at your graph if you have one. You don't need to even really specifically look for anything except just look for fish. If you're marking a ton of bait, that's good enough. That's all you need to be able to see because the bass are going to be intermingled in and around them. So take that into consideration. Black and blue is freaking killer this time of the year. Black and blue. You can, you can get away with some other colors, but like black and blue is my highest probability. Same goes for your jerk baits. So if you go jig, spider jig, hair jig, uh, the hustler, which is a hybrid finesse, um, jerk baits, jig, chatter bait, jig again. We'll come back to jig. Like just. <laughs> Pay attention to what you're seeing. Check every steep bank and on the north side that gets the most amount of sun is the first area of the lakes to ice out. Check the north side and hope for the best. I hope that works. So that's kind of like everything that we did last weekend, what I see coming in this weekend. It's going to be pretty much the same. So if you get in around those boulders, for me, that's the highest probability of success. If you got a lot of timber, definitely hit that. You see Barry caught two sinks. Be good. <laughs> did he? He must have been on the Massachusetts side of that lake. <laughs> 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 um kevin would you rather fish by cape and warmer water or fish near? so that's kind of the issue we're having we're, we're trying to keep I'd sean fish. apprised of the situation honestly my opinion i'd rather fish the colder water i would too because we're going back to that what we said earlier with the cap coming off mm -hmm. it's like it just makes for a more consistent like reliable bite mm -hmm. the only caveat is the place we we're thinking about taking them it's feast or famine. <laughs> That's the only it is issue. Specifically, a spring, an ice out to like mid spring fishery, and then fall. Anywhere in between there, you're not gonna like you. You will catch fish eventually, but it's just it's so tough. It is. Tiago, there's not many places that are like that. I'm curious. Is that? I don't want to say it. Message me. I'm curious where you know to know where you were. Was that? Oh, you were probably over towards the coast. The pond I'm thinking of is west of me. There's no way. That's where I was thinking, too. Yeah, there's, think there's no way that yeah. one's going to be iced out. <laughs> um, no, Mark, no need to be sorry. That was me. I just I saw CT, and my brain immediately thought, can I get River? Um, John, lay down in the deepest water or at the steepest banks. What the hell, John? Or right at the top of the James. steepest banks. Like, you really can't go wrong. God damn, I keep burping. Sorry. Um, That's probably yeah, pretty much just throw the jig. What color? <laughs> Dude, yeah, black and blue. Have we said that? <laughs> Sean, I thrive on famine. Dude, we might. I mean, so we're going to go out to this pond, Sean, um, Saturday afternoon. We'll let you know how it goes, dude. Just south of us on the border. All right. Hmm. And now I'm really curious as to where that is. Uh, question for Andrew. I noticed that you use a G Loomis rod for your jigs. I'm what to model? Out what freaking rod I have? <laughs> <laughs> figure it out. I think it's a seven foot medium heavy fast G Loomis E six X. I think you're spot on with that. I think that's what it is. I couldn't. I don't know. I, they came up with spinning rod, but I'm pretty sure that's what it is. Those are nice rods. And I love it. Those are really I nice absolutely rods. Absolutely love it. Um, what else? I don't know, keep eating us with the questions. What was the other thing? Eh. I'm going to bring that up. What color? Black and blue. Duh. <laughs> I think he's being cheeky. Just just blue. Cause just blue. Although, you've had some pretty good luck on a black and blue jig with a with dark a, green pumpkin trailer. A, yep. And it works, just not as consistent as just straight black and blue in the really cold water. Mm -hmm. There is a point when all the fish start moving up shallow, like much more reliably and consistently where that offsetting color is I think it's mint. while the um, when all the crayfish are molting yeah and yep. just that I don't even know if it has to be that color combo but just that contrast in the color combos will kill it you'll hit a little narrow window where you want to have those just differing colors and they'll choke it and it didn't really seem to matter if it was you know what was black and blue and what was green pumpkin as long as you had the two different mismatched colors they were all about it um Mag bass or jig ran now? Oh, sorry, you were just like I was just no, it's reading good. out loud. Mag, no, I was into it. Mass bag or jig worm rod for that rod? Mass bag. Oh, mag bass. Um, <laughs> mass bag. Is that what I said? I don't even know. Favorite uh, pro angler. Now that's a good question. Jig, jig worm. <clears throat> um, favorite favorite pro angler. Just because I met him, he's a super nice dude. Steve Kennedy. 
Yeah, dude, I've always liked Steve, and like I, I think back to like all the years I watched him on the Elites, and like especially that one he I won beat out him in a flipping contest. <laughs> Actually, no, I think he kicked my ass. In the end, <laughs> yeah. No, you no, we both beat him and um, Paul Elias in like the first rounds, and then they both came back and stomped everybody. <laughs> yeah, because he could. He's like, I don't like this ride. I don't like this ride. And he came it was, back with the rod. He like, he's like, bing, 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 bing. Oh bing, my god, he was like on. sniper. <laughs> bitch. Uh, I like Steve. So, Brandon Ponick. Seth Fighter and G-Man. Those are my top three. And I would put... Brandon Polnick. I'd either put Polnick or G-Man, but I feel like I'd, I like G-Man a little bit better just because like like, I've been following a him a, lot, a little longer. I like Fighter a lot, too. They're all just, like, down-to-earth guys. Like, they're, you can tell that they're genuine through and through, um, especially G-Man and Fighter. Like, they're just they as... Mass bags and they're blocking people. <laughs> 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 You can go fishing with me if you want. <laughs> <laughs> that was great. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, I like all those guys because just, they just seem like completely genuine. Like those guys. That that's that's a big thing for me, man. Like people that are like legit and genuine through and through, and there's no bullshit, no surprises. Um, you know, no like people acting like completely off character like here and there like consistency i don't I really don't know how else to put it but all three of those guys throw off those vibes yeah. they're very well articulated in explaining like being able to explain i know it's kind of funny saying that about g-man he's as hick as hick gets <laughs> but he a redneck not hick um but like he embraces that but like they have like that quality oh and mark zona that's another big one zona yeah he's I think Zone is probably top my list because going to that, like, just the way that they can articulate themselves and really explain things, but they they have that not obnoxious, like, Guggen level of excitement, but they're, it's just genuine little kid, like, I live for this, and it hasn't changed since I was a wee little shit, like, level of excitement for it. And that's how I feel 99% of the time I'm out there. There's the 1% of the time where I'm really frustrated. <laughs> Will Sebago, and I actually think I know where that is. I'm pretty sure I've been there. I think it was Louis Sebago. Where the hell are you reading that? Did you jump? You jumped way off. I ju- sorry, I just... Ow! Yeah, we'll get there. Um, <clears throat> what do you run for trailers in cold water? What do you like? I keep forgetting what yours is. That's that Honestly, strike one. the uh, Strike King structured bug? Yeah. But the new one I just got... Wait, the uh, one that I've been... Nope. What'd you get? The Z-Man Goat. Oh, you told me about that. I love it. I haven't even seen it yet. Oh, my. It's kind of a... It's got the Z-Man, like, Elastec, whatever, plastic, so it's kind of a pain in the ass to get out over the hook keeper, or the bait keeper. Yep. But as soon as it's on... It stays. Ooh. It's nice. It's really yeah, nice. so I can take a look at that. They're I cool. actually kind of like that about Z-Man. Yeah. How they're stiffer, especially for cold water, because I don't want a lot of action. I want the damn thing just to stand there <laughs> and just and be the profile mm-hmm. uh, without, like... Look at me! <laughs> yeah. Hey, over here! <laughs> right. Over here, eat me! <laughs> I'm dancing like it's 80 out here, bitches! <laughs> um, I like Zoom Super Chunk or Super Chunk Junior. Anything that looks like that. Um, what the hell did we just get? The Berkeley Max Scent. It looks just like a Zoom Super Chunk, but it, it's almost like halfway between any normal plastic. Those are sweet too. Though. And um, the old Uncle Josh's porks, and like it, it's got. It's good. We've actually we've been doing really well on that, on that so far this year, yep. relatively speaking. Um, Berkeley Chigger Craw is another one. Like anything that has that craw profile, but not like overly bulky legs and just straight, no taper to them, no curls, nothing, just straight dead action in the fall. Number one go to cold water trailers. Anything like that. Um, rubber skirts or traditional? I uh, traditional. Whatever Beast Coast sells. I, I like those. They work great for me. Trailers on your spinner baits. Oh yeah. Um, any paddle tail swim bait, man. Anything that's three and a half to five inches. I haven't gotten any bigger than five inches, and going any smaller than three and a half, like even three and a half, like four to five is better for me. For what? For Sorry. a trailer and a spinner bait. Because anything smaller than four kind of gets lost in the skirt a little bit. I think the three eighths. What? Three point eight tactics. Yeah, that's that's, that's probably the three. smallest I would go. Um, I have a bunch from Zero Baits out in Utah, of all places. I got some of his paddle tails. Dude, those things were perfect for a swim bait trailer. They were long. They're 
four and a half inch, I think, four and three quarter. Um, but they're not super bulky and heavy. Um, and they had just like a nice subtle kick. So like for me, it was a, a match made in heaven for the back of a spinnerbait. They were, they were phenomenal. Um, oh, Christopher said, thank you. Where? Mass <laughs> Above Ferris and his mass bags. Oh, you're welcome, Chris. I'm sorry, <laughs> dude. I'm just, I'm me. <laughs> um, Jacob Wheeler is a hammer. Yeah, he is. I don't mind him. Um, but at the same time, I don't mind him. He's fine. Going back to what I said about why I like the other guys, which is the only reason why I'm like, I kind of, yeah, and I don't want to say anymore. Um, yeah, Mark Daniels Jr., dude. If you guys, he's he's cool. He is. If you haven't seen, and this goes to you too. If you haven't seen Circuit Breaker from FLW, yeah, go back and watch it. They have every episode still on their channel. I forget what happened. Watch some of it. They, so as the story goes, they have whoever their like main marketing guy is, or like their their um. Whoever it was that was making their videos, I think also does their marketing or something else for FLW. And for three years, they had this series called Circuit Breaker. And Mark Daniels Jr. was one of the guys that they featured in that whole series. And it was, bar none, still is one of the best series I've ever seen on YouTube as far as fishing goes. Extremely well put together, like good music selection. They had great people on there. The guy that was doing like all the narrating and explaining it in between actually going to the angler was awesome. I can't remember his name, but he's been with, well, he was with FLW for a long time. I don't know if he's still there phenomenal series um and the one with mark daniels jr was my favorite um oh god who's the other guy cody cody parker cody no i know it was cody but i can't remember his last name then there's another one they did jt kenny and which oddly enough is somehow related to john the owner of dragon custom tackle hmm yeah <laughs> forgot about that i found that out okay. you know who else i like Ugh. the aussie Freaking what the hell's his name? Oh, um, Luke? No, um, uh, he travels with Paul, Paul right? Yeah. yeah. Oh my god. Oh, that's gonna kill me. John, 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 John no. No. Johnston? No, no, he's the Canadian. No, he's a Canadian. I like him. And Gussie. Gussie's a cool dude. Um, Either way. <laughs> oh, it's gonna kill me. Uh, we're going to try a split tail fluke as a spinner baited trailer. I would absolutely Ooh, John Richards. do that. John, sorry, I just got your message. It says not enough tail wag. Sometimes it doesn't matter. Yeah, that's true. Wait, who said that? About what? Throwing a split tail fluke on a spinning bait. That would actually be a oh. pretty damn good idea. Like that. Um, oh, okay, now I see. Sorry, now I'm caught up to Ferris. He's on Little Sebago. That's actually a pretty good area up there, too. We'll come up. We'll come visit. I want to fish in Maine more often. Yes, Chris, that's the guy. <laughs> um, Versacraw and Jules Bait. Yeah, I've heard those are good. Check out Z-Man, Batwings Chunk. Best chunk drink trailer this day. So. I'm looking it up. All right. Pretty Let's sure take a look at that one. Them. He had a whole bunch of different Oops, stuff. Six Sense Divine <laughs> Swim Bait on Spin. Stop it. I'm pretty sure, Sean, <laughs> I have that swim bait, and I threw in the back of a chatter bait, and I really liked it. Um, What else? <laughs> Carl Jockinson. Yes. I think that, yeah, Carl. Yeah, that's the Thank you, C Christopher and Brendan. Kyle Walter is great to watch newcomer in the elites. He puts out great videos. Yes, Kevin, you're right. I actually, someone, because I posted a video from Polonik not too long ago. I don't know, a few weeks ago. It was one of his newest, one of the uh, videos from the elite series this year. And someone commented on that. And um, I'm actually pretty sure I'm friends with Kyle Walter on Facebook. I'm like 99% sure I am. Um, and I was like, oh, holy shit. I didn't realize. It, I, I rarely get to watch videos. I, I rarely get to watch them. I just don't have much time. Uh, doing things to the channel or I'm working or I'm sleeping. Like, I don't even spend that much time with my family at night. <laughs> After 8 o'clock, dude, I'm just grinding. trying to Because this is what I want to do. So, like, I, I put every ounce of my time that I can afford to give to this to make this work because I want this to work. It's my passion. So, we'll make it work. Dude, my mic's going to go down. Look at this thing. <laughs> I think it's been falling over this. Oh, 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 it's, I'm going to fix that before it falls over. <laughs> now I see what's going on here. <laughs> Dude, I got to hold that so it doesn't. Good. Dude, good thing I was paying attention <laughs> to that somewhat. All of a sudden, look over like the way we had to rig up these mics. All of a sudden, the thing's like <laughs> it's gonna go down. And these mics are heavy. Mine's still good. They're really heavy. Well, that's because I was yanking on mine, trying to 
Shut up. Black and mine. <laughs> um, who else? Hold up. Multiple fish better than anything I found out there. Nice. Uh, John Richards hit me on Messenger. Sorry, I'm trying to pay attention to my phone a little bit here so I can respond to people as we go. Who? I want to make sure there's nothing else. Where's the next state record large you going to come out of? I don't want to say where we're going this weekend, potentially. Where are we going this weekend? Wait, which state? New Hampshire. Where the hell are we going this weekend? We were just talking about. Where'd Kristen go? Ooh. I legitimately think there's another record in there. Oh, there, oh yeah, there is. Um, if not there, then that place where I saw one on a bed that I was like, mm-hmm. that's bumping or it. Or there. Those are those are my two, and we're not going to say. I'm sorry. There's just absolutely no way I'm going to say yeah. any of these lakes. Even if it wasn't for the potential state records, I'm never going to share these spots because they're like. They're not big enough to be shared. Nope, not even close. Like, if we go there and there's one other boat out there, it sucks. <laughs> Yeah. You're just you're sharing spots. You're rotating spots. They're they're tiny. And it's tough when you go out there on days where it's perfect out and you can't go there and there's four boats <sighs> at the launch, four trucks at the launch. And then you turn around. Especially that spot cuz like if right. you can't get in there, <laughs> you're looking at an hour drive to go to the next best spot. It sucks. Right. It's a gamble going. Unless you there. got a John boat and you can get it on the road. But. Then there's that. Um there's a couple of spots and I if it's not going to be like Winnipesaukee, I think absolutely has one. It has the forage. It's going to come from a smaller pond. Probably. It is 100% going to come from a smaller pond. It's either going to be a little tiny pond or Winnie, Squam, or Winnesquam. All three of those lakes have big larges in it. I know for a fact. Saw pictures. Oh. There was a state record caught out of one of those lakes. About eight or nine years ago. <clears throat> 45 feet of water in November. Carolina rig. Yep, Carolina rig. Yep, yep, you remember that story. Yep. Saw the picture, saw the scale. That was a state record. Older gentleman, long time turner angler, didn't want to do it. Because in, unfortunately, New Hampshire has that stupid rule where you are not allowed to transport live fish. Um, there's some people that are trying to make a push to get fishing game to change that. If we think we have a state record, we should be able to pursue that. Uh, without killing the fish because that that just sucks so and this gentleman just didn't want to and he's just like nope not worth it to me I caught the fish that's all I care about and he threw it back um a long time tournament angler guy was a hammer for a long time so it it's coming and we're talking mass it's gonna be somewhere down by the cape <clears throat> well no not necessarily I would think so do well yeah it's got western mass is freaking tanks too well the problem is is that the state record for mass is so Disproportionately above oh, yeah. the average of everywhere else. Oh, yeah. State record in Massachusetts is 15 and a half pounds. That's, New Hampshire's that's, is 10 and a half. I think yeah. in. Actually, Ferris, you might know this. What is it in Maine? Because I want to say it's 12 pounds. Vermont, I think, is about the same. Like, Mass stands like head and shoulders above everywhere else. It's nuts. Yeah, herring or trout. A lot of trout ponds that are stocked here, man, with nothing but those fingerlings. Those bass can feast. I've seen some pretty big fish in trout ponds. Yep. Um, <clears throat> yeah, fishing mode. Exactly. You follow your passion. Guy that was on the Minnesota Vikings. Pretty dope. Oh, I should check that out, Zach. Thank you. I want to take a look at that. Best spinning reel between 100 and 200. I can't say because I don't have enough experience of spinning reels in that price range. I used the Fluger President for years, and I loved it. It's the best fifty dollars reel I've ever had. Which one, the Fluger? Yeah, I think it was one of the best bang for your buck. I've heard good things. I mean, I love my Lose, the uh, excuse me, Team Lose Custom Pro Speed Spins. Those are one thirty, I think. They've been phenomenal for me. Oh, Vermont is ten eight. Daiwa makes great ones. Shimano, like you can't go wrong when it comes to spinning. You can't go wrong. I mean, there's just they're all great. Um, Ryan, what do you do for a living? You first. What? What do I do for right. a living? Yep. Well, currently I'm actually changing That's back right. to what I was doing previous. I have been working with my dad doing construction, carpentry and stuff for the last year, year and a half. Year and a half, yeah. And I'm going back to Southeastern Valley Motorsports actually. Who who actually sells FXR Pro Fish Gear. Yeah, we need to talk to them about that and get that sorted by the way. Yeah, we'll talk to them. <laughs> um I am a mechanical engineer. Um, actually, looking to go back into management right now to be an engineering manager. But we'll see what that holds for me. 
Um, Charles River has monsters. Yeah, monster freaking dude. I caught a sleeping bag <laughs> in the I Charles River. About that. <laughs> I, I thought there body. was a body in it. <laughs> Gross. <sighs> uh, yeah, Kevin. I wish New Hampshire would do something like that. I'll fish in mode. I'll, I'll get to your. I saw your message. I'll get to that um, at the end of this. Uh, yeah, Tiago, I'm I'm with you, buddy. That mass record probably won't be broken anytime soon. Sean, for my record, ten and a half pounds. This is the exact same. Ten pounds eight ounces is what New Hampshire's is too. Yeah. I'm actually kind of surprised by that. Um, it's caught at a white. No kidding, Zach. So that's it's funny because both New Hampshire and Mass, I think the records are pretty close to when they came, and both had the same story that they were not caught in the pond that they're listed at. Right. Um, Sean, smallmouth is six pounds thirteen ounces. Which is insane that New Hampshire's is seven pounds fifteen ounces. It's seven pounds fifteen point four ounces or something like that. It's kind of crazy. Carver, that's what it was. Co two, yeah. See, it sucks that you have to kill it. Like they have a meat. They have the trucks. Like they transport fish. They should put together some sort of program to utilize the equipment they already have and set up three scales across the states. Right, western, central, and eastern parts of the state. I got a state record. Come on out, please. And you know, I may have to wait two or three hours. So be it. I got a live well. Live well within It'll area. stay in there, and I'll <laughs> wait for you to come here because I don't want the fish to die if I'm wrong. Mm-hmm. Um, Connecticut record is 12.9. That's actually that's pretty damn good. <laughs> what is it? Char- Connecticut, River- Connecticut record is 12.9 or something oh, like that. Geez. Yeah, Brian, there's some big fish down there. I think that's like Goodman said, you know, with the um, the herring down there and everything. Plus, you got the growth season. Like, it, it doesn't seem like much, only like an extra five degrees on water temp down there, but I don't know. To me, it makes a pretty big difference to be able to sustain just that slightly warmer water temp plus the forage to be constantly coming in there to get oh, those the bigger fish. And, and, the and trout, because they stock trout the down trout there too. And the alewife. Those fish are going to be huge. And they, they got options. Right. <laughs> like, I mean, right now, all those places have already been stocked with trout down there. All these big fat ass bass swimming around like this is great. Look at all this free food. And, man, well now it's all gone. Oh my God, herring! <laughs> <laughs> Seconds. Right. <laughs> I could fit a couple more. <laughs> um, Maine largemouth is eleven point one. I'm actually kind of surprised it's that low. I would have figured Maine's would be like twelve pounds too. Then Carver yeah, instead is caught there a brook from a bog. No kidding. What? Maine's got big fish. Yeah, Maine does. Maine. Do you want? Know Maine's really good for is like the number of quality fisheries it has. Mm. There's so much well, less pressure so water. So many there. lakes. Yep. There's so many less people. It's way less people because to get out anywhere worth a damn up there is a friggin' haul. It's five or six hours. <laughs> good spot. And New Hampshire has next to nothing for population. I think Maine only has like, I gotta look because I, I know last time I remember seeing New Hampshire has like two point two million residents. That's two point two million more people that I want to deal with. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Maine's got to be like one and a half on the high side. That's, that's my guess. Even there. There's a lot of like just dead area out there. So there's a lot less pressure water. That, that's why they, they just get so much better. Um, Favorite species to fish for other than bass. Do we miss anything else? Up? I can't go back. I don't have a mouse. Um, Watch your work now. I'll laugh so hard. Keep, nope. I don't even know what you're doing. Give me that. Okay. <laughs> oh. Did it work? No, mouse isn't working. Yeah. All right. Um, all right, Kevin, have a good night, buddy. Thank you. Later, dude. Greatly appreciate you hanging out with us. Um, this is a better question for you. Favorite species to fish for other than bass? Ooh. See, your, your list is much more extensive than mine. <laughs> yeah, Chris, I like trout, right. honestly. Trout are fun to catch. I started out trout fishing when I was young, really young. My grandfather would always take me out. And then I moved to a lake that I can't speak of <laughs> and started catching bass. And I was like, this is way cooler. And then I started started fishing with you. And I started fishing with Josh. Yep. And then I started fishing with you and Josh. And then I started fishing with only you. <laughs> and then it, I just, I don't know. I like catching trout just because you... I like catching native trout. Yeah. Native trout are fun to catch. Or I actually just caught my PB trout. Carp is actually pretty freaking cool to catch, too. 
I wouldn't mind catching one of those. There, <clears throat> after watching you and Todd do that for a while, I dude, wouldn't mind getting in on that. Yeah, that was that was a blast. My, I mean, it's not a, it's no giant, but my PB carp is eighteen pounds, and that was the coolest thing. That thing was ripping line like an eighteen pound smallmouth. It was insane. So much fun. I, I want to do it again. Didn't I just see? Grub, fishing grubs, just catch another big giant carp. Giant freaking carp. And he caught a giant freaking catfish, too. Oh, really? Yeah. I saw the carp. He had to go um, in the water after it, like in his underwear. <clears throat> <laughs> really? <laughs> it doesn't surprise me. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, for me, uh, I don't know, man. I'm just, I've been a tra- uh, yeah, bass guy my whole life. But having gone for stripers recently, that's. Are cool that too. was fun. I want to do that again. Um, and closely behind that rainbow, only because there's a couple times during the year where the bass and the trout overlap. Um, and I've actually caught some pretty good rainbow trout on drop shot. And then uh, actually, my yeah, those are nice. Trout. <laughs> yeah, like a couple of threes, um, close nice. to four. And I just caught one that was somewhere between four and five pounds on a spy bait last October, end of October last year. And we're uh, I don't even know if I want to say it. There was a very specific reason we were fishing stupid shallow, um, and that pattern didn't pan out the way we thought it was going to. We, we kind of missed the narrow window for that to work. But we saw a bunch of salmon and rainbow and brook trout up shallow. Not brookie. Um, Lakers. I think it was Lakers. Probably Lakers. Yeah, but I know the salmon and up there, yeah, rainbow were, Lakers. Yeah, were just bombing around shallow. And I was working a spy bait up mega shallow, and... Just reeling it, not looking. All of a sudden, I felt my rod go, Sink! and I look over. At the same time, I saw this just torpedo in the blink of an eye go 15 feet left, and turn on a dime and come 15 feet back right, and then run the wrong way. <laughs> and I was like, holy shit! <laughs> Line going ended up being just a giant rainbow. It was awesome. I can't wait to do that again next yeah. fall. I want to go back there just for that. I want to do it, dude. That was so much fun. And then I had another one. Like now that I knew like what was up there, was what we were in looking September? at. It was October because it was it. it was after I know it was after you could keep it was a designated lake trout lake so you're not allowed to keep any trout after October first. Um, it's all immediate catch and release. You can still target them, you just can't keep anything. And I went right back up in there with a the spy bait. And the guy I was fishing with like has zero tolerance and patience for trout. He's like, "No, we're done." I was like, well, "Hang on, <laughs> I'm not I don't done. mind this for a minute." This is cool. I threw it in and dude, like, it looked like a dolphin coming through the water. You know, the water tension. You could just see like not like a bass where it. it <laughs> where it wakes but you know just like the hump of water as it just came bombing from like 15 feet out and smoked it and i missed the thing that was fun i can't wait to do that again that was yeah. fun oh yeah. fred powers carp king yeah i've seen fred catch a ton of big I've, carp. he actually is the one that got me on carp on carp that's right no the second time the first one is god what the hell is his name on instagram crazy carper i think oh is that the guy that nate yeah we saw him at that pond yep Yep. He's the one that actually had the state record, right? Or near- Oh, yeah, no, he yeah, he blew it out of the water. Dude, Ridiculous. it was like, I don't know, 38 pounds. Oh, my God. Dude, it was huge. <laughs> <laughs> it was like the day before I went fishing with him when he got me on the 18-pounder. He had, uh, actually, no, it was the day that I was there. We, they had Northwoods lock him down. <laughs> it was right before I got there. They were leaving when I pulled in. Yeah. But the day before, he had caught a 38 or 39-pound that's insane. That was a monster. It was sweet. Fly fishing for landlocked salmon. Yeah, that'd be fun, John. I gotta get into fly fishing. It's something I really want to do. I have a rod. That's right. I think I got a that. couple of them. Oh, let's do it. Um, favorite brand of rods. Collected like 15 different brands and still haven't decided myself. Oof. I mean, I'm a lose guy. Or Wicked Custom Rods. Prior to that, I had St. Croix. And I thought I liked them. And to be fair, they are good. But they're a little bit heavier than yeah, all my lose stuff. They're super heavy. Um, I picked it up the other day. I was like, Ooh. yeah, and like <laughs> I broke two. I broke the um, <laughs> I broke three last year. My fault. I had two lose rods where I just cracked the glue on uh, my casting rods from throwing baits that were way too heavy for the uh, rating on those rods. Uh, but John at Wicked Custom Rods was able to fix them for me. While I was waiting for him, I went back to my old St. Croix Mojo Bass rods that these new rods replaced. I was like, oh my god, these things are heavy. This sucks. <laughs> Um, but I mean, they're good sensitivity. They're good value for the price when I bought them 10, 12 years ago. 
Um, Still make a good rod. Yeah, I've heard nothing but good things about Dobbins, and I was going to go with that before I got my sponsorship with Lou's. I do want to try one. Um, that's what Travis. Travis loves them. Yeah, that's like all he fishes. It is. Mostly. Uh, I know several guys. Like 60% off. So. <laughs> yeah. I know a lot of guys that fish them, and that's what I was going to get. Um, Travis Rocket, the guy up north. Yep. He fishes a ton of Dobbins. Yeah. Um, those, I mean, they're all good. I fished a lot of six gill. They're good for the buy one, get one free prices. If you're just trying to expand your arsenal, those are good. Um, not great, but good enough. Um, beef master, to tot hog, to dog. I forget how you pronounce it. Wait, I cannot wait. I'm taking you up on that offer. We're coming. Who is this? Oh yeah, no. Yeah. You're bringing us. Yeah. I've heard they're like smallies on steroids. They fish the same way. Like you just said, you fish them in the rocks, but they fight like champs. I want to catch one. Yep. Oh, my God. I'm sorry. Um, I, I had said it a minute ago. There was questions up above we couldn't scroll back to because I don't have a mouse handy so I can go backwards. Who asked me about gear for, like, swim baits and stuff? If you're still here, bring that question back, please. Um, Dobbins is awesome. Got a few. Fishing mode loves his Dobbins. Yep. Phoenix rods. No, actually, I don't even think I've heard about them. Phoenix? I've heard of them. I don't think I have. I haven't. I haven't. No. I've seen them, and I was looking at them, but I didn't. Um, Jason, Legend Series. My buddy, Josh, has a Legend Series spinning rod for Saint Corn. He liked it. I never used it, I, so I, I can't speak to that. I, just the one guy I know says, that has it likes it. Um, so better rods and reels. Oh, dude, yeah, six heel reels. Uh, avoid like the plague. They're not great at all. <laughs> I would get the Fluger President 10 times out of 10 over anything else from six skill. Um, but again, their rods, uh, the buy one, get one free deals is good value. Bass X, great value for it. Yeah, I've heard one. the Bass that X? That was my old drop shot rod. Oh, yeah, I forgot about that. I liked it. What happened to that one? I broke it. <laughs> Sorry. Just like every other St. Croix. Phoenix is unreal. I broke my, it was an Abu, and then you gave me that St. Croix. I broke my Abu jig rod, and then I had it for the one, the St. Croix that you gave me for, what, two weeks? Yep, and, and then I broke, broke that, that yep. on a big fish. <laughs> and then I broke the other St. Croix, the drop shot rod, and then I broke another St. Croix, which was just another one that I bought. I think that was just like oh, a thousand rods, dude. Right? Yeah. So now I use a Loomis for my jig rod, and I love it. I absolutely am in love with that rod. <clears throat> Dob I want to buy a Dobbin for it. I don't know what I would get a Dobbin for. Cause um, yeah, at this point, I don't know what you get it for either. Uh, Tiago, what was... I thought that was you. What what was the specific question you had asked about rods and stuff? I want to make sure I want to answer that one. Uh, Duckett is a nice flickable blank and lightweight. Yeah, I've actually heard good things about, well, moderately good things about Duckett. I don't know that many guys have fished it. A lot of guys I know fish G. Loomis, but those tend to be a little bit on Sherman the more loves, expensive Sherman stuff. Loves Duckets. Um, yeah, Shimano. I'm, Shimano, I, I know more guys that fish their reels than they do their rods. I don't know many, many guys that fish Shimano rods. Breaking rods like hockey sticks, yeah. yeah no, it's true, because I do it with hockey sticks, too. <laughs> oh, okay, gears you guys use for big baits, rods, reels, and line. You first. Well, I literally just bought my first ever swim legitimate swim bait rod. Yeah, three days ago. I went there. I went to Joe's Granite State to get a trailers for a chatterbait that Gordy gave me. And I ended up walking out three hundred dollars later with a swim bait rod, and a mag draft, <laughs> and a handful of trailers and jigs and all sorts of stuff. Wait, what do you have for a reel for that swim bait rod? It was a uh, Revo ST. I think it's the STX. I think that's what it is. That was the new one. The no, new one. used. It was used. Nice. Old. It was just sitting in my room. I don't even know where it came from. It uh -oh. may have come from you. I think, it, like you said, I think it did come from you. Oh, the silver gray yeah. one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep, that's my old one. Sorry about that. Yeah. Um. Which, I don't know. You need to get that rod. It's right out here. I have two. Well, I have a second one coming. I have... <laughs> I'm going to pull this thing down. Ah! I was almost breaking my kid's rod. Joe is. Joe is the man, Tiago. He's awesome. Shimano yeah, Joe gets me in trouble because I can't go in there without walking away without spending 100 bucks. Yeah, he doesn't say anything, though. You just walk around, you buy stuff, and he's like, oh, yeah, those work. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. 7.6 heavy. What is that? Oh, it's rated to one ounce. All right, so I have that. 
Hang on. No, my new one's three to twelve ounces. I, I had the rod on my wall, and I wanted to actually look at it before I spoke. So I, I have a lose rod. It's basically a frog rod. But it's their, the uh, Team Lose Custom Pro Speed Stick Series, so they're $220, $230 series rod. Um, it's rated to one ounce. It's a seven six heavy. It's more like a flipping stick slash frog rod, but actually does pretty well. Throwing stuff like up to two ounces, even though it's like double what the rod's rated for, but it does all right. Just with a Daiwa Fuego, um, that one's got 50-pound braid, and that has kind of what I've been throwing for some of my topwater stuff, but... I've also been throwing on like a 30 foot liter 20 pound 40, depending on what I'm throwing for. Like I'm I'm getting more and more into big baits. Actually, buddy, do me a favor, grab that new perch and the Huddleston. Oh, please, yeah, you didn't even get to look at that it's yet. Not in real um, life. but last year I had a custom rod built by <laughs> dude. Isn't that thing nuts? I had a custom rod built by Wicked Custom Rods. Uh, it's an eight foot extra heavy. I think it's a heavy. I can't remember. I might go get it in a minute. Um, it's rated half ounce to three ounces, so it's really ideally suited for stuff like this. Or treble hook baits, you know, something that's not overly crazy. Um, doesn't have, like, you know, I, I got this 8-inch Huddleston, too, but they make, like, the, uh, I think it's the Deluxe 68s where the hooks are hidden. It's not maybe ideal for that where you, like, kind of want something a little bit more stout. You know, but for stuff like this, it's perfect for like the six to eight or nine inch swim baits upwards of the three ounces i go a little bit heavier and i have the lose super duty 300 um wide i think is what i have on there for my reel and right now i have it spooled up with 30 pound braid because i actually like that one better for throwing my bull wake compared to that other lose rod that i i like that one a little bit better for throwing like these single hook swim baits that all said, I'm getting another loose Super Duty 300 reel, and that one's going to be just straight 25-pound fluoro, and it's getting one of their new Super Duty rods, specifically made for swim baits. I'm getting one that's going to be rated 1 to 4 ounces. So I have my braid set up on the Wicked Custom Rods rod because it's a little bit more supple, so I'll like that better for fishing my like treble hook baits, basically. And then I'll have another one that's just meant for swimming like glide baits and you know bigger single hook stuff that I don't really necessarily want braid for. So, those are the two that I have. Um, yeah, Dobbins, Nicholas, and Dobbins swim bait rods are badass. I Dude, I know a lot of guys that fish those swim bait rods. They love them. You yep. absolutely love them. Like, swim bait universe, man, on Facebook. I see yep. guys talking about those rods all the time. Oh, yeah. Um, I forget the hell it was, but they were just talking about it, about the Dobbins rods. It was a swim bait rod. I don't remember what it was, but it was, thing was ridiculous. Oh, um, um, Mike Buka, Bullshad. They have their own signature series from Dobbins now. Maybe that's what I was thinking. Maybe that's what it was. It could have been it. I don't know. Some guy was throwing a swim bait on a big Dobbins rod. It was sick. <laughs> uh, Sean, I've only got one DEF CON, and if I'm lucky, tomorrow night I'll have two. <laughs> I'm waiting for that drop at 8.30. If any of you bastards cut me off on getting you, I'll find you and I'll cut you. <laughs> ah, I really, like, I have one that came from um, his personal stash. If memory serves correct, he had a bunch of his own that he's holding on to, and he had uh, one of his um, the six inch one, the stubby crank downs, but it only goes down to like two to three feet max. It's like a perfect swimming bait to get down like one to two feet. I can crawl it, and it, it's like it's just perfect for all these kettle ponds up here. But I want the next one that goes down five to six feet. That's the next one I want, and that's what I'm, I'm really holding out for. If I can't get one of his, then I'm going to try and get one from like Toxic Base or something like that. I want that next six to eight inch kind of crankbait style swim bait that cranks down five to six feet and then i'll be i'll pretty well covered then from there i'm just going to keep working on expanding on those two but different colors yeah dude this i have been trying to get this thing from real prey for months waiting on just a perch i i love perch man i've got everything in perch and this is another the next big one i was really waiting on and i like this because like it's thin the whole way through it's not like the hud you know, where it's beefy the whole way through and then comes down to a super thin tail. This thing's pretty consistent the whole way through. So I think that's going to, like, I think it's going to swim Flaps almost from the hook shank to the tail. Flapsibility is going to be better on that. Yeah, big time. Whereas, like, I feel like on the HUD, 
I mean, you can see it right there. The, the tail only swims to like here is where you kind of get that body roll. Maybe upwards a little bit towards the dorsal. Yeah, but it's all you need on that though. Right, whereas on this, it looks like I'm going to get a nice, subtle, good swim almost all the way up to the hook shank. So like that's, it's just going to be a different kind of action. <coughs> what is this wedge tail? Oh, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I'm all about perch. <laughs> perch and bluegill. That's all I want, man. For these big baits, I... Or crappie. Crappie's the next one I'm gonna start Just filling stuff out with. Give me that purple BB one Z whatever <clears throat> rat. I'm happy. Yeah, that rat is awesome. All right, what else we got? Dobbins champion. Yeah, that's the good one that I've heard good things about. What kind of electric uh, electronics do we run from Pasha? Um, a kind of a smorgasbord of stuff. What the hell is that hummingbird? I've got one little hummingbird that yes. came with the like the skeeter like from the factory. Oh, that one. Yeah, oh, it's like a little five inch one that's built into the dash, and that's my through haul transducer one that just gives me speed and depth when I'm running on plane. Well, depth more than anything. Uh, but then also provides 2D sonar for people fishing in the back, and then right there for navigation side imaging, I have an HDS nine oh, Gen three. And then up front, <clears throat> I have a Helix 9 Gen 3 and an HDS 7 Gen 3. So the HDS units from Lower Ants are interlinked, so I can share waypoints front to back. Um, the Helix 9 is dedicated just to my Mega 360. And that little in-dash Helix, I don't even know what it is. It's old. It's, it, it was in my boat. I don't even know if it's a Helix. It's not. No, it's, it's way pre-Helix. Um, my boat's 2010. It, it, that's the stock. <laughs> that's the stock unit that came with it. So it's... Whatever the hell it is. Uh, but that's just my shoot-through haul transducer. That's what that's for. Um, I am upgrading very shortly. Because I've been doing work for a guy that does a bunch of electronic stuff, making videos for him as he needs them. And instead of paying me, I said, just keep a tally of what I, you owe me, and I'm going to put it towards a trade-in. I'm going to trade in that HDS7. I think I'm going to go for a 12. And I don't know if what... It might just be another Gen 3 um, HDS 12. But then that way, at the wheel, I can put a 12 there instead of the 9 to make it nice for when I'm doing side imaging and mapping. And then up front, I'll have two 9s. So it'll make it a little bit easier to see my map and 2D sonar when we're video game fishing. And then I'll still have my Helix 9 from my Mega 360. Although, there is a part of me that wants to go to a 12 for the 360. <laughs> oh. <laughs> it would make life a lot better. But then there's another part of me that wants to just go, like, all hummingbird. Because their side imaging is nice, plus the mega. I don't know. I got I got a lot of options ahead of me. Everything's super cool with Hummingbird. It really is. It just seems not bad mouthing lower ants at all. No, not it's even, just not even a little bit. It just it just seems I don't know more more better. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Um, I mean, it is their their side imaging is second to none. Really it's good. phenomenal. Um, so Sean, I was the same way. Um, these from Real Prey are actually not bad. I think it was 40 bucks shipped, which is still kind of steep, but end of the day, it's really not that bad. Um, the ones from DEF CON are definitely expensive, but they float. So if you snap it off, no big deal. It's going to come right back up. Go get it. Uh, anything else I have a really hard time spending money on? Like I've got, like if Beefmaster is still here, he's trying to convince me to get a Depths 250. No. $180 I, I for a bait that I, sinks. I don't want anybody to, no. I can't do it. I can't. I, I will eventually, but not anytime soon. It's just it's especially on a friggin' style bait. And I still haven't caught a damn thing. I spent thing twenty five dollar on that freaking mag draft, the eight inch mag draft. Oh yep. I I kind of wishing I didn't do it. <laughs> <laughs> I wish that thing floated. Yeah, it's all right though. Um, Evan, what do you recommend for lower end GPS fish finder? Low rants versus hummingbirds. So oh, we really need to get Steve on this show. Yeah. So we can talk electronics one night. He is the guru at this stuff. But for like bass fishing electronics, based out of New Hampshire, go there. The guy sells used units for really good prices. And he's got a range of like what quality they're in as far as like how many scratches or stuff are on there. For the most part, he really only takes stuff that's in pretty good shape though. Low rants. Low rants. Whatever. That's why I went with Lowrance myself because it. Well, spell it differently then. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Why would you that say that? Easy. It's Lowrance. It says Lowrance. That's how I say it. <laughs> why? What did I say? No, it's Lowrance. Lo oh, whatever. L A. Like French. Oh, Lowrance. <laughs> going to the Lowrance. Oh, L A. 
You ever meet met a girl that went to L.A.? <laughs> oh, it's from Oklahoma. Oh, uh, that makes sense. I was at boot camp with a kid from Oklahoma. Oh. <laughs> they do talk weird down It's there. pronounced La Rance, not Low Rance. La Rance. That doesn't make any sense. Whatever. It's like Key Tech and Kai Tech. <laughs> K Tech. <laughs> um, Humminbird. Yeah, wrong one. Um, Low Rance, you can find like HDS Gen 3 units are still phenomenal graphs. They're a couple generations old, so you can get them at a pretty good price now. But they're still very responsive for that touchscreen. So if you want something that has touchscreen functionality for cheap money, an HDS 7 Gen 3 is like incredible value and it, it doesn't cost that much money. And if you want to go interlink the two, it's one cable to make the two talk to each other. And that's it. You get two HDS units and they talk to each other seamlessly, no crap, just easy peasy. Uh, and again, you get a touchscreen, a very responsive touchscreen for next to nothing. Humminbird, though, to me is where like the better quality is. Their side imaging is second to none. It is insanely clear. They're going to have Mega Live coming out. They got Mega 360, which nobody else does. Like, depends on how much money you want to spend, man. But if you're going like lower end, cheaper money, then it's really hard to beat Low Rants. Um, I don't, I don't know about La Rants. <laughs> La Rants. I'm going to call it like that. Lawrence. 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 <laughs> you know it's funny though. Okay, off topic. Keep going. Um. Do I use custom? Oh, can you share? Yeah, so you can... No, not between two different brands. You cannot. And you can't even share waypoints between some models within the same brand. Like the um, the, the the original Lowrance Elites units that came out, which are now the Hooks and the Hooks. You, you can share from HDS down to those, but you can't share from the Hook up to the HDS. You're just better off looking for like a used HDS series and that will seamlessly share spots to another HDS unit. Um, th that's where it starts to get a little bit more convoluted and di difficult. Um, I do not use custom mapping, not yet. Yes, Brett. Hummingbird did come out with their live scope, live site, but yeah, it's not released I yet. I think it's coming out next month, something like that. This year, I know that for sure. This summer. Sick. <laughs> yeah, Sean, that's true. Um, guys, as a former employee, is pronounced Lawrence. Sorry, I, I'm now I'm catching up the conversation. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, Jason, the New Hampshire perch is our shad. Yes, absolutely. Never really had a good fish taco unless you've been to L.A. <laughs> L.A. See, he knows. You know that letter candy. <laughs> yep. L.A. <laughs> well, you aren't wrong. <laughs> El Taco Loco, the taco truck in L.A. is amazing. Mm. <laughs> Mm, the asada fries. I. Mm, oh man, now I want. Just want break keto again next week for more tacos. Um. Speaking of <laughs> yeah, food. <laughs> I forgot about that. Oh god. Sorry. Um. Yeah, you, you're absolutely right. I, yeah, Nick. I I just spent another seventy five bucks on glides because I'm an idiot. I don't like them for the sense that dude, they're they're my new jerk bait. Like it took me years to get used to fishing jerk bait and get confident with it. Now I'm doing it with glide bait. But I'm a. Sorry. That smells good. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I'll eventually get used to it. We'll make it work. Yeah, Letter Kenny. If you haven't, if you guys are looking for something new to watch, get on Hulu. Watch Letter Kenny. You will not be disappointed. Spare, respect spare parts, bud. <laughs> she went so fucking awkward, bud. Yeah, fucking <laughs> <laughs> Um, Holy crap, it's already 10 o'clock. All right. Uh, you know what? This has been phenomenal. But we should start wrapping this up. So. Um, any last questions, thoughts, concerns, get into it now. I'll stay on for another hour if you guys want to keep talking, by all means. Um, but if now's a good time that you've all exercised your, uh, questions, then I we can call it quits here too. I don't care. I'm not going anywhere tomorrow. I'm working from home. So I don't mind staying up super late. I gotta work tomorrow. Yeah, sucks to be you, nerd. Dad, I quit. <laughs> <laughs> yes, he <laughs> had his cargo pants pocket. Oh, my cargo pants. <laughs> That would be amazing. <laughs> my tot. <laughs> That's not my tot. <laughs> what was what movie was that? Mark Napoleon. Oh, I haven't seen that. No, it was another one. Um, the you one with Adam Sandler it? and Andy Samberg. That's my boy. Uh, his pocket nuggies or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> He'd wear a shirt with a little pocket up here, and he'd put little chicken nuggets up in there. And <laughs> they're drunk later, and he pulls them out. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> Ferris, I'll do another hour if people are here watching. They got questions, man. I'll talk about it all night. 
I'll keep going. Day out tomorrow. Ah, oh, screw you, Sean. Don't do this to me. Get your hot dogs. <laughs> I still Napoleon Dynamite and Borat were two movies that were absolutely ruined for me before I even had a chance to see them. Whoa. Holy oh. Tiago! Champion! Thank you. I know I liked you. <laughs> Thank you. He's double donating. He's going to donate when we fish with him later in the tournament this summer. <laughs> I'm kidding. Guy donates and I shit talk. <laughs> Thank you, Tiago. Seriously, man. Thank you. Donate your toys away. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Let's pay for another hour. <laughs> Early river fishing tips, early as in this weekend. Now you're talking current. So for me, that's a little more difficult because current just throws me through a loop. What was the thing? Early river fishing fishing tips. You're Mm. better at this because you're a trout guy and you've you've worked current way more through your life than I have. So So just work where the current breaks. Anywhere where it's either going to be... They're not going to want to be in the current. When it's going to be cold, they're going to want to... They're gonna to want to be up in those little pockets, either behind big structure where the current can come in and kind of swirl around, like the a hole like really that you would fish for, depending on what the name of those trout fish. But <clears throat> anywhere that the current breaks, where that's slack water, they will be up in there. If there's like a little shallow shelf in there, they should be up on there on the timber or on rocks. Yeah, just I mean, not directly in the current. We just found that this weekend too, mm-hmm. and that, that's the kind of way I've always. I mean, I've only have one river that I know really well. Other than I won't count the spot we go to in the winter because they're literally all in one friggin' hole. You just keep dragging the same five hundred foot line, you catch fish. <laughs> like that doesn't count for me. That's not experience. That's that's shooting fish in a friggin' barrel. Um, no. But that river that we were at this past Sunday. Yeah, that's the way I've always fished it. I, I'll concur with what he said. Anything just out outside the main river channel, um, <clears throat> especially if you can get in some back pockets that have at least like a moderate amount of depth, maybe in the middle. Still want to be close to the river, though. Yeah, because they're not going to go that <clears throat> far. It's still too early in the year. We're having these. I mean, we just had this past weekend. It was 62 days last week, like mid-60s one of those days, and then it dropped down to the negatives in 48 hours with the wind chill. Like, that was nuts. No, but Scotia. Sorry. That's fine. But the uh, <laughs> the fish were, like, right on the edge of that drop still. I mean, they were out of the current, and they were only up in two feet of water, but that was the most logical spot for them to be. It was hard structure just outside of the current. It provided warmth. Out from under the ice. But they could duck right back into the deepest water in a 30-foot swim. So, I mean, that that's it. you got to kind of put in the time to really find that kind of stuff. <clears throat> um, And thank you, Rogue. Hopefully we'll uh, we'll have a good one on Sunday. I think we will. Uh, Christopher took you guys' advice, picked up some Yamamoto hula grubs and some jerk baits with a hint of blue. You will not regret that. I can promise you that. What is this? Christopher said took you guys' advice, picked up some Yamamoto hula grubs and some jerk baits with a hint of blue. Those Vision One Tens, the GP Pro, was it GP Pro Blue or just Pro Blue? I think it's Pro Blue too. I don't remember. I don't know Whatever. names. Of they're, just, they're just good. Yeah. <laughs> they work so good. Um. Oh, okay. Now I'm caught up. Nick Nick Rose from Nova Scotia. Damn, thanks, man. That's right. Appreciate sweet. it. That's a hike. I actually have a friend that lives up near your way. One of my gaming buddies. Um, where the hell does he live? Moncton or Fredericton? No, I have two guys. One lives in Moncton. One lives in Fredericton. And now I forget which one lives where. But I ain't too far from Nova Scotia. Aren't they related? Nope. We're just all friends. All gaming buddies from back in the gaming days. They're related for some reason. Nope. Uh, no, his brother came down. That's what it was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sick Yoda. Yeah, dude. That oh, Tacoma was I amazing. Another, I want another Tacoma. Um, ounces the bass snatcher. Touch on hair jig fishing. Hmm. Ounces the bass. How do I know that? It does sound familiar. So we only just recently got into it, and not even specifically hair jigs, because we've been fishing the Beast Coast Hustler, which is a hybrid between you know regular traditional skirt or finesse skirt and hair. Um. I just fish it like another jig, man. Except that one you can really rely on a little bit more just to sit there. That's what the purpose of the hair is. In really cold water, and there's like five different kind oops, sorry, five different kinds of hair that you can use in cold water and all reacts differently, but uh, it reacts the same, but to different degrees of how much it does what it's supposed to, which is it looks like it's breathing naturally, just sitting there. And that's where that comes into play. Um, Sharon, Lunkerman, mm-hmm. talking to him about hair jigs. He said, 
typically they can do really well just the jig you don't need a trailer for him specifically he'll throw the uh trailer on there <clears throat> not for the bulk or you know for the look the profile but to slow down the rate of fall if he's throwing something really really small that's what i do yeah um, and he's just using a little chunk of something to help kind of flare everything out, just add a little bit more resistance that's falling down. That's another way to look at it. I Again, I've only just started fishing him. We've either thrown a swim bait trailer in the back or um, not a Berkeley chigger crawl. There's another Berkeley, and I, I left all those baits in my boat, so I couldn't get them out for the stream tonight. But it's something kind of like a Berkeley chigger where it's small body, small legs, and I can cut down the body just a little nubbin and stick it on there, and then the legs stick out like proportional to a regular jig um but you know micro sizing everything so it's all proportional that's that's all i've been doing it looks good where are we uh john oh te perch jerk bait is my favorite nick do smallies spawn on main river channel stuff or do they tend to get off the main channel into skinnier water I don't know. I, I would don't... think they'd want to get up. I don't know. I've never spawned fish, river fish. <laughs> Have a good night, Tiago. And again, thank you very much for the donation, man. Tiago. Seriously, greatly appreciate it. We'll be catching up one of your tournaments for sure. <laughs> Actually, probably a couple of them. Yeah. I, yeah. Um, sorry. Go ahead. Dude, river and smallmouth. <laughs> I, I don't know. Because I've never actually, outside would... of freaking December, I've never targeted smallmouth in the river. No, I, well, except I would for... think. I was just saying Lawrence, but that's a yeah, but yeah, they're Sense. they're all up in the shallows, out of the current. Right. I would think they want to be out of the current regardless. For spawning, yeah, because they don't want their eggs going flying everywhere. Right. I'm sure they go up into backwater and... Yeah, they got to. Have to. I've literally seen bass beds in a river, and it was in slack water. Like, a big back cut. Yep. On the Sahegan River. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, it's now weird. I'm thinking of the other place, um, the res, kind of. 30 minutes from here, where I saw what I thought was a state record largie. So that that is a flooded river, but now it's a big, flat... Um, oh, yeah, okay, yeah. Um, it's got river current the whole way in the middle, and everyone scatters to the back. And in the, even by the, down by the boat launch side, like, that's just straight up river down there. Yeah. <clears throat> and they'll move out of it, and, like, anywhere there's a current break, they can just duck out. I've found... I used to catch fish off beds back that way, like, 15, 20 years ago in my John boat. Hmm. So that makes sense. Back, um, back before I was born. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, turn around Candlewood Lake where here it's popular smallmouth. The Candlewood's very good for smallmouth. Very good. I've only caught one fish out of there. And it was a tank. Should have been a six. It should have been a six. <laughs> been a six. <laughs> was, what was it? Twenty two and a half inches? I think t- yeah. And what was it? Four and a quarter? Four something. I I'll look. You you read and react. I'll look because now I, I want to. It was a four. I don't remember. It was four something. It was big. Whatever it was. It was four and a quarter. It wasn't that long ago either, so it should be easy to find. I literally just saw the picture. There it is. Four point three pounds, twenty one and a half inches. Oh. Dude, twenty one and a half inches, only four point three pounds. That thing was skinny. Yeah, that thing was sweet. Super <laughs> skinny. Nice. Jerry's like, what the. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, he was asking about hair jigs. Um, yeah, John Ben Nowak. Yeah, he dude. I've watched a couple of his videos. I like him. He's good. That dude knows smallmouth. That's for damn sure. Ben Nowak. Yeah. Was he the smallmouth experience on I Instagram? Think, I think. I think so. Yeah. Uh, tips to catch pre-spawn largies on the Connecticut River. Uh, I cannot mm-hmm. answer that. If Justin were here, he could answer. I I'm not I'm not that big on river fishing. Um, I just don't have that many opportunities we're like 95 percent of the water we can fish in new hampshire is ponds and then there's like a couple of rivers <laughs> and there's only one close and it's i i don't know man like i guess it's a, it's the same as anything else you just look for structure the right kind of structure they want to be in throw some big stuff and hope for the best hang on um timber you know anything i guess if you're talking pre-spawn find out the only areas where they can potentially spawn you know, you can do a lot of that from scouting satellite, looking for shallow back pockets. Uh, they're going to get out of the current. And then look for any obvious channels that are going to be close to those. That's going to be your highway. Out of the main channel, up into those back spawn places, and work everywhere in between. And that from there, it's just time in the water, eliminating bad water and finding productive spots. Did I finish that burger? 
I think you did. Dude, you are spare parts. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Uh, and yes, Sean, absolutely right. Smallies do tend to spawn a little deeper than largemouth. Any tips on what to look for in electronics besides bait? Jack. Um, hard structure, man. Just start looking for all sorts, like anything. Vegetation, rocks, logs, and just make note of it. Like, we... Oh, man. I don't know if you remember asking it, because I know Josh did for the first few years that I got my graph, that I could actually start, like, putting in GPS waypoints. Mm. And we'd be going down along a bank... Um, and like they were up on the shore, you know, we we're any any like isolated little rock or timber or whatever patch of weeds, we're hammering them. But we you know we we're sitting a good like 50, 60 feet off, in eight to ten feet of water, which is deep for this bond. And going along, and also I have his two D sonar, mark a big rock, mark it. And be like, what the hell are you marking that for? I'm like, don't need it today, but I might need it in the fall. And just keep marking spots and just try and remember why you marked them. If you're not great with your memory for stuff like that start a log start writing things down even it doesn't even have to be super specific of like waypoint number 136 at lat long this <laughs> there was this rock like just kind of keep a general idea as to what you're marking and why and that's it man like cover water mark everything that looks good um this early in the year look for bait too and it's almost going to look like well, I don't know, how would you explain that like a, just a bunch of schmutz going by on the screen like you're just what, going bait? through yeah. It looks like there's inter like a cloud of interference. Yeah. Really. Unless it's like decent sized bait, then you'll get a, a, a bunch Line. of little yeah. arches, but it almost looks like paint splatter across your graph, just constantly, you know, filtering through. Um speckle. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's well put. Speckles. And you know, look for stuff like that. Like I, oh man, last couple of years that's been the big thing, is like getting around the bait early in the season, that's where the fish are. There's a couple of spots we have in some of our most well-known lakes that have just been brutally tough uh, early in the year. There's no bait on it. You move over to spots that generally aren't super great, but all of a sudden the bait's over there, and that's where you catch every single fish. So just kind of keep an eye on stuff like that. Don't think about what you're doing just now as you see things. Think about can that be productive for me throughout the year at different times, and just keep that in consideration. Um, Where were we? Oh, that was that. Fishing mode. Throw a jig. You're comfortable with. Oh, yeah. Big group. Oh, yeah. That was Jack. That was electronics. Fishing mode structure. Yep. Fishing mode's absolutely spot on. Moving up spawn. That's why I asked. Thank you. You're welcome, Nick. And you're welcome, Jack. Ooh. What's your opinion on the flatworm? What the hell is that? Is that the, uh, what do you mean? the Berkeley? Yeah. The power max, max pet? Yeah. Max set. Oh, they liked it up on the river. They did. <laughs> they liked it big time. Um, I'm actually, Kyle was hammering him on that up here. Oh, yeah. Different color, but that bait. Was he just doing it on a drop shot or was he doing something else with it, too? I couldn't tell you. <laughs> All right, that's fine. That's fine. So that, that still answers my question. I can, yes. tell, I can tell you, but I can't. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's fine. I, I won't. So, yeah, it's good. Um, it, it, it really kind of blew up on the scene this past year from the St. Lawrence River. When the elites went there and everybody's hyping up for good reason, like everybody in the top 10 was fishing the flatworm at some point and they were killing it. Mm -hmm. um, all right, Sean, have a good night, buddy. We'll see you Sunday. Um, I, I mean, we just bought a bunch of jig trailers for this spring, uh, for right now, all this ice out bass fishing that are the max scent jig trailers. <laughs> They've been working great. Mm -hmm. So that, yeah, that stuff's good. Um, I mean, the Berkeley spot. Yeah, Shout baby. out to the good people over at Filthy Angler. Oh, yeah, dude. Oh, yeah. I love oh, them. your buddy. They're my best friend. Jim. We need a gym out this year. Yeah, we do. We'll make it happen. Jim and Mike. Oh, dude, that'd be fun. That would be I want to fish day. both of them. We'll put them up there on Bounty Factory. Oh, man. I'll jump the boat with all four of us. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, yeah, I am. <laughs> okay, let's do it. <laughs> Hold on, boys. Rap. <laughs> <laughs> double, Sean. double, double, <laughs> triple. <laughs> We were coming back one day late last year. Middle of summer. Oh, yeah, dude, he was laughing hard. It was just boat chop. It wasn't even too, too windy out. But just on any of these big lakes with all the fun boat traffic out there, you just get like two to three foot washing machine chop out there. 
and we were coming back to the boat launch. It was just a fun fishing day, and I had it Fast. pinned. <laughs> coming around the corner, we hit a series of waves just perfect. It was like, skip, skip, skip. <laughs> you could hear the motor fucking wind up when I got it, it out of the water. It was like, <laughs> <laughs> but it was like, it was like still it like was a controlled. It was, and it was. It wasn't a violent <laughs> slap either. Like we kind of came down good. I mean, yeah, we, we came, came down, down fine, and it was just water was just like. <laughs> It looked a lot worse than it actually was, and these two kayakers, just uh, laughing, and husband and wife, and they were just like, "Yeah!" Came off the thoughts as we got back. Whoops! Oh, that was fun. <clears throat> I always say that. Gotta go, boys. Wife time. I see what you're saying. Oh yeah. <laughs> so you've been back in thirty seconds. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> no. no. Uh, He's gone for the night. Yeah. Max sent four inch Sankos and drop shot. Call yeah. limitus. Championship and winning. When was that, Chris? Was that 2020 or 2019 or a different year? Or, well, probably wouldn't have gone that far back because I don't think those max sense are that old. But it could be wrong. Uh, but that's awesome, man. I had, um, I coached the Hillsborough Deering High School team. And 2019, we did not do so hot. They only got two keepers in the boat. They're on Ned Riggs off a hump over in Center Harbor uh, in the last like 20 minutes of the tournament. And then this year, for the qualifying round, um, I put my team out on a hump up that way <laughs> and <laughs> drop shot. And I forget what, um, I think it was just the magic flick. And they were doing damage on it. They did really well. They caught seven of their eight, uh, seven fish. And they had an eighth, and my, my freshman dropped one, unfortunately. They should have had a limit. Um, but they caught seven fish, drop shot, a hump, 35 feet of water, and they pulled them all in. Uh, but we, we just couldn't find any good kicker. And then we did kind of the same thing for the actual state championship and but they only caught a couple it, it, like everything shifted hard and we just didn't i didn't anticipate the fish shifting that far up so unfortunately what didn't quite go as well you oh you're on the winning team dude congrats you won three in a row yeah that's right you guys Damn, are killing dude. it that's sick um dog swampy Ooh. Yeah. Under 250 yards. Yeah, I'm f- it's like the higher the price, the better they're gonna be. It's you, <laughs> more sensitivity and lighter, and like, I used to be of the opinion that I would only spend that like big money on my more like finesse stuff, like drop shot and jig, even though jig is not really finesse. My, but my jig rod is my nicest rod uh, as of right now. Same here, and having that, and, I, and it always will be. In, until until I get these new rods, then I have to upgrade my drop shot. My, my jig rod to get a nicer <laughs> rod. <laughs> like, I, my first custom rod is before I met the guys from Wicked Custom Rods, and it's a North Fork Composites X-Ray blank. That's a $250 blank. My rod, fully built out, was 600 bucks. Dude, it's, it's insane. Like, I can sling a three-quarter ounce jig all day. And I've had days where I've caught 30-plus fish just on the jig on that rod, and I don't get tired. Um, I've had 7-foot rods that were heavy as hell throwing bigger baits, and I got tired throwing that after a while. Now I have an 8-foot rod from Wicked Custom Rods. It was an expensive rod, but it's light. Yeah, and it's just perfectly balanced, too. Like, I gave him my reel so he could balance the rod perfect. You put it on your fingertip, it doesn't move. Just dead even. Whole way across from an 8-foot rod. And you just... You can sling stuff so easily because it's so perfectly balanced and the rod itself is so light. Like, that's what you're paying for that a lot of people don't understand when you get into that, like, higher, higher tier rods. Uh, And then in the case of really super finesse stuff, again, super light and ridiculously sensitive. Fish, fish the cheaper rods and learn. Expand on the cheaper stuff. Find what you love the most and then... And then upgrade. And you will notice the difference. Big time. 100% 100% you will notice the difference. Especially if for any reason you need to go back to the other rod. Like, I've had, I had a couple of days like that. I got my nice new jig rod, and I went somewhere. I was like, you know what? I'm going to fish two jigs. And that rod I have my other good reel on isn't ideal for that. But my old jig rod will work, so I'll just swap the reel onto that. And, you know, pick up my primary. I'm like, okay, it's not working. That's what I was concerned about. So I'm going to go to my backup with a different jig tie on, so I don't have to worry about retying. I'll pick it up. I'm like, nope. <laughs> it's just... Huge step backwards. Put that back down, and I'll just keep retying my jig on this rod the rest of the day. For reaction baits, you're fine with cheaper rods. Yeah. Yeah, you just straight cranking. I mean, I, I guess still it depends. use landing rods. Yeah, those are great rods. They work. Yeah. 
40 bucks. <laughs> Qualified to do some, end up last in the state championship. Oh, yeah, yeah, Jack. Yeah, it was, dude, that, that qualifier at uh, the state championship was tough. There was a huge shift in what those fish did in a very short period of time. And there's only a couple of people that anticipated that, and they did well because of it. Um, is it? Yeah, all right. We'll wrap this up. I know we we're about maybe another hour, but we'll, we'll start to wrap this up. <clears throat> I'm starting to see now, like, people are starting to dip out. So um, let's say another five, ten minutes off. So get in your last questions, and we'll wrap this up because it is starting to get late, and I need water. I need I've got, I got a splash left. Um, what is it? Maybe to fish jigs or drop shot deep for reaction baits. You're fine with a cheaper rod. Yep. Uh, and no, you do not need a thousand dollar for every lure. I, I, you know, again, that's like you're spending money on something like that. It better be something that you live by. Like I live for jig fishing, and drop shot fishing. So, did you see? I did see Millikan's mega bag. It was a, uh, it was clickbait. No way to put it. That was not the heaviest bag of fish ever caught on film. If you want to get technical, no, it, was, it was the heaviest bag that you saw the cast to catch through on every fish. Butch Brown, 65 pounds. Thank you very much. That was on film. Yeah, it was insane. <laughs> 65 pounds. Not not to sneeze at 60 pounds, but that's the reason why I've never I've, I've always been like about video titles like that. Exceptionally misleading. And just straight up lies. Uh, Nick Rose has all 13 fish and stuff. Look at the rods for the price point. I've actually heard not bad things about 13. Not great. But yeah, for like what they are, they, they're good. Uh, I have fished Pawtuckaway a couple times. Last time I fished it was for a tournament. Jesus. I've never fished Pawtuckaway. Um, It's different. The only thing that sucks about fishing there is where you launch to get out to where it is no longer no wake takes like 20 minutes of idling. No thanks. Yep, that's why. I'm, and the well, boat launch sucks, dude. It sucks yeah. so bad. There's a giant rock right there. There's like no room. It's it's just terrible. There's big fish in there though. We should go there. It's super shallow it's for most of it. There. Super stained, big largies. Yeah, you can't. What is it? Bay of um, it's it's actually called a bay. I want to call it Bay of Fundy, but that's up by Nova Scotia. I forget what the hell it's called. Um, but yeah, like. I, I know guys that won tournaments just in that whole area. They never put the outboard on. They just tow motor out and hammer them. Um, That's my style. Because I don't have a motor. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah, Chris, that's amazing. Uh, we caught mm, the only keepers my team brought in. I forget how deep they were now. But they were still deep. Not quite as deep as last time. Yeah, dude. Beast Coast Magic Flick. Yep. There awesome. Yeah, launch that. Fundy. Maybe I got stuck in it after I told him, watch out. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> Fundy. Oh, I was right. Fundy Cove. Ha! Um, and yes, the ramp does suck, Paul. Sucks hard. But place is cool. Actually, that's where I've had one of two altercations on lake before. And it was the one-year Fish to Club tournament. And it was during the club tournament. Uh, sorry. One-year Fish to Club trail and it was during a club tournament. And we were working this, like, back cove with a bunch of docks. We worked down like the whole line. We're halfway down, and we're just pitching jigging. We have, we hadn't hit a dock or a boat yet. And there's a guy up on the porch overlooking us. And he's like, "Hey, hey, think you're a little close?" I'm looking at my buddy. I legitimately perplex. I'm like, "What? <laughs> don't you think you're a little close?" I'm like, "To, to what?" Because my boat was like, I don't know, ten feet away from everything. He's like, "Well, the way you're fishing." I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm sorry. My boat's well away. No, 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 you're casting too close to all my stuff. You know, you jerk off fishermen. Hook my boat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I was a pain in the ass. I know. I was like, sir, <laughs> I'm really sorry. I, just, I haven't hit anything. I, you know, I'm just, I'll, I'll, I'll move along. But he kept yapping at me. And I forget what else he said. I was like, well, sir, at this point, like, I'm allowed to fish however I want. This is all public water. Like, I was, I kept my cool the whole time. And he's like, all right, fuck it. Fuck you. Fuck it. I shouldn't be swearing. But, like, that's. He went off, and he goes in the house. I look at my buddy. I'm like, should we go? <laughs> and he comes around the corner, and he had a, a German Shepherd and a Rottweiler. And he said, go get him. Are they going to swim at me? <laughs> so takes a big stick and hucks it at my boat, lands a foot from my boat, and the dogs come out, and they start just swimming around the boat. Nicest goddamn dogs ever. They just they were as happy as could be. <laughs> like, oh, <laughs> this is great. And he's like, how do you like that? You know, I ruined your fishing. You know, what do you think? Public water. Yeah. And I was just like, put the tow motor high. I'm like, have a good day. And I left. I was fuming at that point, though. I couldn't believe the guy. 
<sighs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris, have a good yeah, night, one buddy. Of these one of that day. Right? <laughs> Bonnet right at his head. Yeah! <laughs> one of these days, people are going to see that cast. Greatest cast has never been seen. I've seen it. You've seen it. It's like this is the greatest song in the world, but this is not the greatest song. <laughs> it was a tribute. <laughs> the gra- it's a tribute to the greatest <laughs> cast in the world. Whoa! <laughs> 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 Fantastic. Uh, Fight with Northwoods. Now I can't be about that. Yeesh. That sucks, man. That was All right, Nick. I appreciate it, buddy. Millions. <laughs> well, millions on the Winnie one. On that other one, that probably would have broke millions, too. Yeah. I don't have it, Kevin. That was back in 2011. I didn't even have a GoPro yet. I think my wife bought me a GoPro in 2013. It's right after my son was born. He was born, yeah, 2012. Yeah. It's been a while. Yeah, that guy was a he's he's still a there. Mega douche. We should go oh. back and just. I want to go say hi to Karen again. <laughs> I don't. I do actually. <laughs> yeah, you do. <laughs> Definitely want to go say hi to her. I won't go back in that spot though. I'm just like, it, there, there's only. I mean, I went there for a reason. There's only like two times of the year where there's potentially fish in that area. It's not like I go there all the friggin' time. So. Remember that guy with the friggin'. They came around me and I was like, "What the hell are you guys doing?" <laughs> and they came around me. Oh, and they that around guy! To you. You're an asshole. I'm an asshole. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Another story time. That that was last year, right? Yeah, it was last year. We were fishing a small pond, one of our favorite places, and there were people out. We had no idea what they were doing at the time until later in the conversation with uh, me and him. Okay. And they were just going like. Like, right along the shore, but they were looking for milfoil. Like, they actually do a pretty good job of, main, of you know, checking the lake for this stuff. Because once it gets in, in, like, a good amount, it will overtake a pond. So, they were going through looking at it. And, like, I'm watching them come all the way from the opposite end of the lake. They came around me. They chased the otters, first yeah. of all. <laughs> they went between him and the shore. And, and I wasn't far from shore. No. I was maybe... Casting distance still. No, Far easy. casting, yeah, but you I were was, casting distance. I was casting up into it, yeah. Yep. We're within 100 feet of shore. Yeah. I'm 20 feet from the bank, and they come up to me, and I let them get within about 50 feet, and at this point, they made it clear. they're they're This is where they're going. And I spoke. I'm like, excuse me, and all three of them look over. It's two kayaks and a guy in a little John boat. I'm like, do you mind going around me, please? I'm, I'm fishing this area. I'd been fishing there before they even came around the corner on the opposite point of the friggin' lake. I've been in the same spot the whole time. It's not like, like I beeline over. Like, I'm oh, like a hundred yards from this listening. I'm like, with, I think it was with Keith. Yeah, you were. And I, I was, was like, on my boat. Oh, here it goes. Here it goes. <laughs> Million views. <laughs> <laughs> but I was I was quiet. Like, I was calm. Like, I, I was nice. Like, excuse me. Do, do you mind? I'm, I'm fishing the spot. Can you please go around? The guy's like, oh, it's okay. We're just checking for milfoil. Okay, that's great. But, sir, I'm, I've been fishing this spot. And, you know, it's been going good. Do you mind going around? Something to that effect. <clears throat> He's like, ah, don't worry about it, man. We'll push the fish out to you. Yeah, and I lost I heard at that, that point. And I was like, <laughs> ding, ding, ding. <laughs> <laughs> there it goes. I was like, all right, you know what? Fuck, it. Fuck me then, right? I guess I'll go fish somewhere else then. And then that's what he says. Well, you're kind of an asshole. <laughs> it went downhill from there very fast. Yeah, like, I'm the asshole. <laughs> right? I think and then took it pretty well, though. Yeah, for the most part. And then the conversation <laughs> evolved to... Uh, <laughs> oh yeah and then he's <laughs> so I always thought there was a speed limit here at 35 and at one point like I had to get up to that spot like an hour before that <coughs> I ripped up the lake doing like 45 that's fat. and that's where the whole when he called dude, me an athlete he's like was fucking spraying like 15 feet in the air dude. I, I trimmed up but I, I, don't, oh, okay. I wasn't pinned <laughs> right. yeah, um, there's not enough room for me to pin it all I hear is <laughs> and as I look and I see you come around the corner I'm like holy shit <laughs> so and the guys are oh, you're an asshole I'm like what do you mean oh, I saw you run up this leg like that and I'm like there's no speed limit uh, no and I um, I was like well sir with all due respect I was doing pretty close to the speed limit speed limit here is 35 and he goes well just see you go to show how ignorant and stupid you are there is no speed limit here and I'm like then why the fuck do you care what speed I was going <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have anything to say to that <laughs> that's pretty funny <laughs> I, uh, I just don't understand people. Uh, you were going too fast. There's no speed limit. Well, which is it? What? <laughs> Pick 
going? Am I going too fast? There's no speed limit. You should have took off and went 60. Oh, dude, I should have swamped his ass. So I his ass out. That guy was just the biggest jerk. Anyway, we have <laughs> uh, way off track here. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, we gained fucking five followers after there or whatever. People but after that story. So we that did. Pretty good. We're actually doing pretty good, dude. That like, all right. So at this point, it's it's getting late. We'll wrap this up. Um, Red lure theory. And early, okay, last question. Yes, a hundred and ten percent. Yes, I. <laughs> ah, if I can get it up, there's a reason why I own this. Even if it's not quite perfect for that colder water temperature, I have it in case the conditions align. I have red jigs i have i have actually a bunch of different red jigs i have red lipless i have red square bill i have red jerk baits i have red chatter baits i have a red uh glide bait that i just bought yes i very much believe in red in the spring don't know why it works it just works uh fishing mode no not all lakes do only when a Pasaki does squam is actually 35 miles an hour and it's 25 at night Newfound does not have a speed limit. L I'm pretty sure Winnesquam does not. I don't think Sunapee does. St. Lawrence does. Sa only in the American Narrows. I have a $100 ticket to prove it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brian. Glad you were over there. Oh, damn, dude, you caught the whole screen. Thank you. Um, yeah, 35 on Squam is a joke. Nobody believes. Oh, yeah, Massive Beast, I guess, 35. But, yeah, not every lake and the ones that do, like, it, it's all over the place. <laughs> Farwell, if I I hate jet skiers, man. I had a no, I had. You know how I think of them. Oh yeah, <laughs> 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 they sit in the woods at radar. Area. Yeah. Oh well, screw them. Yeah, Brett, exactly. Thirty-five, dude. Everybody gets out of that channel and just, wah, just like, Gone. <laughs> nobody cares about the speed limit up there. Um, crap. What else were we talking about? But oh yeah, red. Anyway, yes, red, red, absolutely killer. Early spring, I just I caught one of my two fish that I caught on Sunday. It was on the red lipless crankbait. So, oh yeah, that's right. It do work, and I know guys that catch giants yo yo in those little red lipless crankbaits. So, it's good. Absolutely, should be throwing it. Should be in your rotation for this time of the year. Mm -hmm. Um, all right. I think that's gonna wrap it up. It's been a long night. This has actually been by far the best stream. I'm gonna have to go check, but I'm pretty sure we hit a record for playback. So unique viewers for this. Thank you, Ounces. Have a good night, buddy. Um, Later. I'm pretty sure we hit a new peak. I can't see it right now. We have, like, the stream that up behind us, but uh, I can't see that. Dude, like, our average, we were sitting at, like, 50 almost the whole night. Like, you guys kill it with donations. This is fucking awesome. <laughs> Holy crap. I didn't even look at that. Dude, yeah. Like, this was this was phenomenal. Thank you all. Cool. Thank you, Kevin. Thank you. Um, Yeah, wrap it up. This was a good one. So, I, I freaked not sure what we're going to do next Thursday, but for everybody that's still here, not this Saturday, the Saturday after, next weekend, get ready because the whole show is dedicated to this. We're going to have special guests here, Swimmate Scrutiny. They're another channel based out of here in New Hampshire. They're these two guys that absolutely live and die by sw big swim baits, and they have got one hell of a collection. Mm. So we're going to have them here, and we're going to talk everything big fish or big bait related fishing here in the Northeast. So... It's going to be one of those that, even though they're guests, they're pretty much going to host this one, <laughs> is, I think is how it's going to go down. That's probably a good idea. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and we're going to get a lot of good feedback and stuff. And actually, what we're going to try and do is I'm going to reach out to a few other guys I know that have that live this big bait life and get some of their feedback that I can help interject. And I actually, that's a good idea for you to do the same. Reach out to a couple different people and be like, Oi, I like this thing. Tell me about it. And just, just so we have some more that we can, we can feed into the conversation, yeah. too. I'm going to give Brian a shout. Brian! <laughs> yeah. Um, not anymore. <laughs> so, uh, that'll do it. Uh, Fred mentioned the auction for fishing. Oh, yes! So, I still have to pick a winner from all the people that bought 603 Bass Gear that earns a free fishing day with us. Um, oh, yeah. I'm just waiting for Mint Printworks to send me that info. Uh, I requested it the other day, but I don't know if she got it yet. I think she's been in and out of the office. But I'll get that, and I get to pick that winner. And then after that, yeah, we could probably do something. Auction off, give away a little, you know, free fishing trip with us to somewhere. Yeah. Not sure where, but we could we could pick a spot. And clearly we're willing to drive pretty far too. If it's a good spot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll drive. Oh, yeah. As long <laughs> as we'll drive. Oh uh, yeah. <laughs> I'll drive. 
thankfully he doesn't sleep. He stays up the whole I time. I do this and I talk. And I, I, <laughs> I, I, I didn't even sleep on the way back from St. Lawrence last year. No, no, not the at first all. Year a little bit, but did you? I don't remember. Maybe like an hour or two. The drive this last yeah. year was great though, because we streamed the whole like for like a couple hours on the way out. That was fun. It was. Amish. We absolutely hit a new record for playbacks, by the way. That's the most number of unique numbers. Mm-hmm. That's crazy. Farwell, North Carolina. Oh, Jesus Christ. Let's go. It's Kyle. Wow. <laughs> I'm an idiot. <laughs> hey, buddy. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind going down to North Carolina. You still catching giants down there? <laughs> Freaking probably. Yeah, talk to Lanciotti. He's another good guy. He makes great baits. So, it'll be good. Um, we'll, we'll figure it all out. So, other than that, time to wrap this up. I'm tired. I need something to drink. And I get to wind down. It usually takes me like an hour and a half to wind. No, I don't want that. That's gross. Get out of here. Soy sauce? Nope. <laughs> it takes me like an hour and a half to wind down for doing these streams because it's it's always awesome. Go to. Thank you very much, buddy. Have a good night. Yeah. Everybody else, thank you all for watching. And anybody that shared it, I have to check social media to see who shared stuff. I'll get to it. Thank you all. Greatly appreciate it. Hopefully, we have a really good report for you next week after we go out this Sunday. Because we're going giant hunting. I hope so. I've already got my I don't even remember the hell we're going. Well, it's either going to be really close or really freaking far. Which one's far? Oh. Yeah. Mm. yeah. Oh, that's hence why I bought that big-ass bait. Nice, Kyle. That's awesome, man. Yeah, 6.6 and 35 pounds of like. <laughs> that's a bag. That That's one of our goals this year. 30 pounds. 30 pounds. The Dirty 30 bag. Looking for it. Okay, we're done. Wait. Thank you all for what? I, I, what did I say? What? I have no idea what I just said. Just the noise came out of my mouth. <laughs> I thought you were going to say wait. <laughs> <Quit, quit, quit. laughs> there you go. Greatly appreciate it. We will catch you next week. Andrew, sign it off while I kill the street. I am signing off. I'm going to bed as soon as I get home after I go to... Help me put this one back together. And then I do something else when I get home. <laughs> we will see you guys next week. And actually, who's coming with us? Sean? Probably. We'll make it work.